I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her on TV, on radio, and on your smartphone, this is Talk TV. is Talk Today with Jeremy Kyle and Nicola Thorpe. Hey, very good morning to you, my friends. It's gone 6 o'clock on Thursday the 18th of April. You're with Talk Today on TV, radio, online and your smart speaker. Here are your top stories this morning. Kidnapped threats and the misuse of thousands of pounds of campaign funds. The extraordinary allegations against Tory MP Mark Menzies now under investigation. Preparing for retaliation, Netanyahu rejects the UK's calls for restraint with Iran and tells Lord Cameron Israel makes its own decisions. And don't come, that's the warning from Dubai Airport. Uh, thousands of Brits are among those affected after historic flooding in the city affected the world's second busiest terminal. And sunshine for some in the UK today, but for the vast majority, cloud and rain will be sweeping through. I have the details in the forecast a little later. Cheers, Naz. Well, now it is time for your headlines with Emily. Thank you, Nicola. Good morning. A Conservative MP has been suspended from his parliamentary party after allegations in The Times that he misused campaign funds. £14,000 from donors is said to have been transferred to Mark Wensey's bank accounts and used for private medical expenses. The MP for File in Lancashire disputes the claims which are being investigated by his party. The Prime Minister's plan to send some asylum seekers to Rwanda has been hit by delays for the fourth time after the House of Lords insisted on changes again. It means the bill to send migrants to the East African country won't become law until at least next week. Peers want to see an exemption for those who work for the government or the military abroad. Police have broken up an international cybercrime gang which gave scammers the technology to trick victims into paying them online. It let criminals steal people's information, including almost half a million card numbers. Police targeted the gang's site LabHost on the dark web, which helped criminals send fake online payment sites to victims. Well, Helen Rance, the cybercrime lead from the Metropolitan Police, says it attracted scammers who weren't very computer literate. They have done this in a way to attract all sorts of different people and make it really easy for them. They, the, the website looked fun. It looked, it was very easy steps to be able to send out these phishing emails and defraud people. Travel chaos continues at Dubai International Airport as the city is hit by the worst rainfall in 75 years, leading to deadly flash floods. Cars have been submerged and there have been long traffic jams on the city's main highway. More than a year and a half's rainfall fell in just a few hours and forecasters say more bad weather's on the way. And the Scottish government's expected to confirm it's ditching its flagship climate change policy. Ministers have been told the target of cutting greenhouse gas emissions by 75% by the end of this decade is unachievable after missing eight of the last 12 annual targets. A statement from Holyrood is expected this afternoon. Those are the headlines. I'll have another update in an hour's time. Thank you, the First Lady of British News, Emily Rose Adams. A very good morning to you. Uh, first of all, uh, Nicola Thorpe, Cabinet Thorpe, how's the neck? It's doing OK, thank you. A little bit better, After but I think I'll After being shot at it with that gun yesterday. Yes, I had man. a Thera gun used on me yesterday live on air whilst I was drinking champagne. It was the best morning of my life. I um, went out for dinner, so I'm feeling a bit fuzzy. Oh, you? Mm. Well, that makes two of us then. You were, you were drinking champagne in the morning, so fuzzy we will be. Uh, yeah. Just as ever, some throwouts for you for... Uh, is it Thursday? Yeah. Uh, Thursday morning on Talk Today. Uh, this extraordinary story. I can't wait to hear what Charlie Rowley, how he spins this. Uh, Conservative MP Mark Menzies is, is another one. He's under investigation after allegations that he misused campaign funds, put the money into his private bank account and paid for... Well, apparently private medical treatment. I, I only ask you this. I'd love your opinion. I'm not bothered about whether it's a Tory or... 
What the hell? Our MPs have seemingly absolutely no respect for the people who are paying their wages. How many of them are going to be found doing it stuff does, they shouldn't be doing? It does seem bizarre, doesn't it, that out of however many hundred there are, yes. there seems to be quite a high proportion who are involved in scandals of this nature. I mean, if it's not funds or drugs or rent boys or stings or yep. taking money to... to uh, just unbelievable. But a listen, what do you make of that? Talk today... God, my life is boring. Talk today at talk.tv, text to 87 treble 2. Would love your thoughts on that. And going to do this later, always contentious. UK aid. We all know about the cost of living crisis. We all know how appalling it is for many people. Beyond the M25, my friends, right? We still give millions of pounds away. This is a watchdog uh, found uh, overnight that the inappropriate use of six and a half million pounds uh, by an Indian fund. Doesn't matter what sort of fund it is. What it means is, do you believe currently we should give the money that we give abroad? Should we keep it here and make the services and the people more successful and better off? I don't know. What do you make mm. of it? Talk Especially today. when they're countries that are richer than us. Like, obviously, understand the many arguments we're giving to countries that are worse off. But, yeah, we'll be discussing what the benefits What do you make of it? Does charity... Are. I know it's not true, but does charity have to begin at home right now because of how difficult it is for so many people? Talk today at talk.tv. Text to 87... Dub, treble, uh, uh. Close. So yes. close. 87 treble 2. Uh, uh, uh. I just had to check it then. Yeah, it is. Right, well, moving on to our top story now. A Conservative MP has lost the party whip over an investigation into claims that he misused £14,000 of campaign funds, which he denies. Mark Menzies allegedly made a late-night call to a 78 year old age, what's that got to do with the price of fish, asking for six and a half grand to help him secure his release after being locked up by what he called bad people he met on an online dating website. That's one of the allegations reported this morning in The Times. Locked up by bad people. There was only one person to get on this, Conservative advisor. Charlie Rowley, good morning. Have you ever been locked up by bad people, can, Charlie? No, no, I haven't, actually. And haven't can I done. tell you, ladies and gentlemen, why we wanted the, the child star? This is his birthday today. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Charlie. Charlie. Thank, you. Thank you very much. 21 again. <laughs> so, this... Thanks for the makeup department. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Talk us through this story, Charlie. Oh, uh, so he's lost the whip. He's being investigated by the party. Um, these allegations that he made a call to an aide to transfer £6,500 because he was with bad people. Do we know actually what the truth was about that? Um, I don't think we do. It's yeah. an investigation that's taking place. Um, I'm uh, loving this. Can't and, wait um, uh, and you have to wait the outcome of that investigation. I think, look, the story is extraordinary. Uh, yes. How, uh, again, uh, meeting people, allegedly meeting people online through a dating app uh, and uh, uh, it's seemingly in the middle of the night, which meant he had to call... Uh, reportedly a, a parliamentary or um, a, a, an assistant back in his constituency to stump up cash for his release, money that should be used for campaigning purposes, not... Release. Personal. Let's just go back there. It's all alleged um, here. So uh, all alleged, He yeah. goes on the... Allegedly goes on the dark website. Meets... Not a dark website, a, a dating site. Well, it could be a dark, dark dating well, site. <laughs> Turned out he was in the dark, I imagine. Uh, met whoever... Um, and this is brilliant. Get the camera on Charlie Ruddy. Um, and, um, and then found himself in prison, locked up or tied up somewhere, but had access to his mobile phone. All alleged, of course, you know, might have just been doing campaign work at home in his office. I, I have a feeling that Mark Menzies... I mean, obviously, none of this can be proven, but when I read this this morning, yeah, I had vision... Do you remember Little Britain when he used to... When, when David Williams yes, came in? I was driving down the motorway when I found myself having a... It's unbelievable. I mean, this is just on a serious note, Charlie, and I know I go on, but, but the, 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 the quality of our politicians is an absolute disgrace, and everyday people must just think, what the hell are we voting for? Forget political parties here. They're all at it, it seems. Well, you're right. It's another scandal, um, uh, all alleged. But, yes, another scandal if it's, uh, if it's proven to be true. I mean, he's lost the party whip mm. uh, and the Conservative Party have to investigate it because this is, a, say, campaign funds that should be going for campaign purposes, not for personal reasons yes. or whatever uh, has happened, potentially in, in this case or not. But it's another headache for number 10. You're right, it's yes. another scandal, another Conservative MP mm. that adds to the, the, uh, the, the sleaze and the scandal of, of, of the party, which is no good for Rishi Sunak. If you want to be uh, going to the country to say, look, you know, um, uh, me and my team uh, mm. of Tory MPs, uh, uh, are the best people to, to continue to lead the country. Sure, but it's not as though Mark Menzies has got a completely clear past. We know no, that in 2014 there was a scandal. We're reading the, the front page of the Sunday Mirror from 2014. So, ten years ago, Tory MP quits in drugs and rent boy 
scandal. What I don't seem to understand is when, I know exactly what you're going to say. Yeah, when these kind of things are proven to have been true or somebody admits to having, you know, got involved in a scandal or a sleaze of this nature, they're re-employed or they end up, you know, going to the back benches for a while and then they make their way further. He's a trade envoy. This is somebody who was on the front page of the paper saying drugs and rent boy scandal. And there's millions of people in the United Kingdom who have got a moral compass and would, I think, make incredible MPs. And yet it's the same people. We're recycling the same people. Absolutely why, right. Why don't they disappear, Charlie? Why? What are the decisions made in the Tory party and other parties that go, actually, it's probably best if we bring the old guy back. You know, I Who's... think it is, and you know, you know, you you won't agree with this, but I think we pay, and I, and I can't even believe I'm going to say, I don't think we pay enough. I don't, I genuinely believe we should pay MPs more because I think the quality of MPs is an absolute disgrace. <laughs> yeah, but, I, but you're right, recycling think, that man. Well, I so, still think that's rubbish because I know people who are on like 25k who right, would yeah, take okay, 30k yeah. to work as an MP. Right. Do you know what I mean? Okay, yeah, I just, I just honestly. Sorry, we're arguing amongst yeah. ourselves. Well, no, we're, we're having a discussion. Yeah. Actually, it's see, quite good. But seriously, Charlie. Why reuse somebody who's mm. got that kind of stain on their reputation? So I think, um, look, trying to cast my mind back, I mean, he lost his job as a, I think he was a, a, a parliamentary private uh, a secretary, secretary at the time. Um, and, you know, but you're right, he was still an MP. You can only lose your season and be by being kicked out of politics. And sure. he's you know, faced the electorate since then uh, on a multiple occasions and his constituency have still returned him as an MP. Mm. Uh, so there is still obviously... Uh, something that he's obviously done right within his constituency that has enabled his constituents to, to vote him back in. I mean, it's no excuse, but I think at the time he sort of um, uh, admitted to uh, uh, mental health issues and, you know, he wasn't openly gay and, you know, all of those so things... So come, come, come sure. but, but, of course, you know, um, when you are an MP, when you're in public life, the standards are uh, that should be expected of you are so high well, that I've you cannot on. fall below them. This and when you do, that obviously creates a headache. This is why I've gone on. No, this, and I've said I like it. This is why I keep going on about Rayner. Just show out what you've got and you'll be free. Can I just say about this, the other thing, apart from recycling is, and maybe I'm boring, right? How do these people think? Are they completely stupid to think that they're going to get away? The yeah. way, even I, at 58, know the advent of mobile phones and social media. You can't do this stuff. This is going to... How can you be somewhere with a rent boy who's demanding cash and maybe allegedly there are drugs and not think that somebody is going to say something? You idiot, is what I'm saying. I'm not saying do what you want, but if you're in public life, we expect and we deserve more, don't we? I, I think that's absolutely right, and I think we do, and we should have um, uh, better um, than what we've seen and what we've heard over from uh, the, the last couple of years from Conservative MPs in particular um, mm -hmm. that have fallen below that standard. But I do think there is a question um, also about Westminster, and we always have this question about Westminster, the lifestyle, the hours, the working hours, the practices, the um, amount of alcohol, the lobbying, the... You know, it is no justification. It's more of an explanation as to how people, if you're uh, working incredibly long hours, if you're away from home, if you don't have a family, if you don't have roots, or if you're away from your family for long periods of time, working late into the night, voting until whatever, you've got access to booze, you've maybe got access we, to lobbying. Maybe we you've got, you, it, it, it is a, it is a, a, okay. a, a, a fevered uh, uh, area. Okay, look, maybe we expect yeah. too much. People always say to me, why do you think these footballers go to... Go, go to I mean, that ladies mm. and prostitutes, whatever, drink a lot and do this, because they're on 300 grand a week, they train for two hours and they've got nothing to do. Maybe, mm. just maybe, we expect too much to look up to these people, but there are elected representatives. You should be working for us, not getting, I don't know, in these situations. Look, it just makes me mad. I think that's totally right, and that's why I think it's, it's no justification, no. but more of an explanation that, you know, Westminster can be a very, very lonely place for a lot of people yeah. uh, when you're making those decisions every day, when you're voting maybe against your own party, when you've got an email and a, 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 a letter a uh, uh, sack full of uh, abuse and, you know, sure. what you see on Twitter, it can be a Try very... Try being on the television. There's no alcohol. There's complete abuse. And I have to sit with my... <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Um, now, the other thing I want to do, can I do this? Tories... I mean, this is extraordinary. We, we, I don't know what newspaper this is in, but um, I think it's quite reported everywhere. But um, in, a, in a sort of landmark uh, poll overnight, the Tory government trail Labour in... Ev forget numbers, in every major political issue. We're talking about defence, we're talking about local government, we're, we're talking about everything. I mean, I'm not sure. To me, it just smacks of 1997. We've done 14 years, this government, and people are just, you know, I, there's no way back. But on, on things like defence spending and, 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 you know, the old days, the Labour Party, they're, they're, they're ahead of the Tories. I mean, this is Armageddon, Charlie. 
Um, well, it's not good. Um, uh, don't <laughs> have the sob again. Don't, don't, it's not good. Don't get, don't get me wrong. It's not um, something that anybody in number 10 would want to be waking up to again this morning. Another headline, oh. another poll where things uh, don't seem to be going in the right direction. But I think still within that poll, 45% uh, of people still are not ready or uh, yeah, right thinking about a Labour government. Now, that means it's there all to play for. And I think... Just when it comes to things like defence spending, I don't think there are really that many people that think on the back of things like Jeremy Corbyn, you know, who wanted to get rid of our nuclear deterrence, someone who uh, uh, Sir Keir Starmer supported in his leadership campaign. I don't think many people will think that the Labour Party are the party of defence. I don't think that people in this country will think that the Labour Party are going to be the party that's going to be tough on immigration when you're seeing issues like the Rwanda bill being blocked by either Labour peers or the Labour Party in the House of Commons. I think when it comes to the actual election and people have to focus their minds on what the country is doing or what the Conservatives are offering versus what's gone on in the past or what the opposition or the opposite could be like, uh, people will really have to think hard and those polls will, will narrow. Well, thank you so much Amazing. to birthday boy and Conservative <laughs> Can we get him a cake in the next Charlie hour? Penny. Bless him. <laughs> yes, please. Thank you so, thank so you much, much, Charlie. Well, Thanks. we'll see you in the next hour. Let's take a look at some of this morning's front pages now, as well as those allegations into Mark Menzies' campaign fund abuse. The Times also features a blow for Rishi Sunak after hopes of significant interest rates cuts are dashed, with inflation falling slower than expected. The Mail published an exclusive poll that finds almost half of people don't want that Starmer government, just like Charlie said. That's despite the Tories trailing their rivals on defence, on tax, on migration, everything. And American Idol Harry. The Sun that. say that Prince Harry has cut all ties with Britain as he officially registers as an American resident. Uh, paper review on the way right now, 6.15. Thursday morning we'll have across the UK. Now Israel makes its own decisions. That is the message from Benjamin Netanyahu to the Foreign Secretary, Lord David Cameron, after he urged restraint in the wake of strikes from Iran last weekend. Well, the UK scrambled RAF jets to help protect Israel from that attack. Well, Mia Javendafar is a lecturer in Middle East politics at Israel's Reichman University and joins us live now from Tel Aviv. Mia, good morning. Wouldn't Israel be wise to take this on the chin and accept um, the what happened over the weekend um, and the way in which UK forces, allied forces, stopped those missiles from actually hitting um, Israel, with the exception of, of a few, and take that as a win? Well, that's the dilemma, Nicola. That's a real dilemma that we're facing in the state of Israel. On the one hand, we faced the biggest aerial ons onslaught ever. Um, not even the Russians fire missiles and, you, and drones at such high quantities uh, that the Iranians did on the night of the 13th of April. And uh, the kill ratio of those uh, missiles and drones was spectacular thanks to a number of factors, uh, uh, our good defense system, and of course, our allies, the United States and Britain. So on the one hand, one of the dilemmas is, yes, let's just say this is a win. Let's walk away from it. Let's perhaps uh, sanction Iran, the Iranian regime, and, uh, and not escalate. But Nicola, you know, we're living in the Middle East here. Uh, this is, uh, in this region, uh, if you take something like that on the chin and just walk away from it, despite the fact that uh, you managed to destroy so many of the incoming drones and missiles, then you risk encouraging further attacks. Why? Because the Iranian regime is establishing a red line here. They're saying that every time from now on you attack one of our, one of our people, one of our military officials, we're going to do that to you. And if Israel doesn't respond, then Israel will gonna, is going to have to live with that red line. And this is something that no Israeli leader would accept because of the Iranian regime's previous behavior towards Israel. Mia, good morning. Welcome to Talk Today. Thank you for coming on. I have so much I want to uh, say. You touched upon many things there. Um, what I thought was very interesting, and, and whether he wants to listen to Cameron or the United States, whether it's diplomacy, you know, there are people in this country, my friend, that would say we, we did what we did with our jets for you because you're an ally, perhaps you should listen to us. I'm, I'm not getting into that debate. I mentioned about the reaction. Talking about Nick was talking about tit for tat. Um, Iran's proxies, we know this, the Houthis and the uh, Hamas and, uh, and Hezbollah have been waging terrible things in the Middle East. Now, the fact of the matter is, and I've talked about it for a long, long time, it, sanctions aren't going to work against Iran because they'll continue to do business with Russia and China. Uh, my question is, where do we go from here? Everybody 
uh, anywhere, I think, in the world saw what happened to your country on the 7th of October and understood the need to get rid of that terrorist organisation. You would also understand that globally people will look at what's happening in Gaza and go, this is appalling, what needs to be done? Where does it end? Does Iran... I mean, what, what Nick's saying is you go back, they go back, other people get involved. People are starving in Gaza. Uh, Israelis are terrified. There are hostages still held. We're six months into this, and, and, and I'm just interested, from your point of view, how you see this playing out, sir. This is uh, like, uh, you know, trying to solve a Rubik's Cube while trying to land an uh, aircraft on the Krypton factor. A yeah. uh, program I remember I watched in the UK. Um, I'm Iranian originally. I'm from Iran, moved to the UK. I lived for 17 years in your beautiful country. And I'm um, Iranian-Israeli. Both, being both Iranian and Israeli, uh, Jeremy, I can tell you this is something, this is, a, this is a mathematical equation that you need a computer, super computer, a quantum computer to, to, to solve if you want to balance everything which means it's extremely difficult. We have to, these things are interconnected. Um, the, first of all, the Iranian regime is very unpopular with the people of Iran. The people of Iran want to have a better life. Just look at the high, large number of Iranians who are asylum seekers in the UK. They come from a very oil rich and a, and a, and a very beautiful country. But because of the regime's policies, uh, you know, antagonistic policies, it it's denies the Holocaust. It calls for the elimination of Israel. It arms anybody who wants to kill Israelis. It arms Hamas. So on the one hand, we have to confront that. This is not just about tit for tat. This is a war that's been declared on Israel. We ne Israel never wanted this war with the Iranian regime, but the Iranian regime declared war on Israel in 1991. This has been going on since 1991, Jeremy. So Israel has to confront it because for the first time, the Iranians are now actually attacking us directly. Before it was, they were subcontracting it, if you like. But now they're attacking us directly. So we cannot uh, leave that uh, without a re response. Now, of course, the response will have to be measured. We don't want an escalation. It's somewhere between you don't want an escalation and you don't want to leave this unanswered. On the question of Gaza, um, there are many things we have to do. Uh, you know, uh, this is a war that's terrible. Again, Israel did not want it. But one of the best ways to find a solution is for Hamas to accept a ceasefire. And for the flat, I think that the last two or three ceasefire um, offers by the state of Israel have been rejected. I'm not going to sit here and tell you we've made no mistakes in Gaza. We have. But the situation in Gaza needs to be remedied with Hamas making compromises. And every time we try to do that, Jeremy, we are hitting our heads against the brick wall because Hamas doesn't care about its people. It's Sinwar, the leader said, He's even willing to see 100,000 people dead to get what he wants. So this is, as I go back to, to my original uh, example, this is an exact, this is extremely difficult and, and we are in a very, very tough situation. Thank you so yeah, much uh, for joining you, us this morning. Brilliant. Nir Javendam Far, um, yes, thank ha you so much. How interesting an Iranian who's now uh, in Israel. That's yep. really interesting. Thank you, Mia. Yes, indeed. Good. Well, still to come on Talk Today, the House of Lords blocks the Rwanda bill for a fourth time. It's a shock. And a woman is arrested after allegedly taking her dead uncle into a bank to sign off on a loan. It is absolutely fascinating. Don't you get any ideas? Well, well, well. Uh, the man on Sunday is Anna... Mahai Lover. My Kyle Lover. And broadcast Sean McDonald. Take us to this morning's papers. We're doing that next at 6.22. We're coming right back in three. Do join us or we'll be talking to ourselves. Cheers. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat, oh. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Quite right, too. 
It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I was just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on what just <laughs> happened. <laughs> Whoa, listen. There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know what's I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. That's quite a small statue then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans. Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just, 40 yeah. minutes, 40... Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, 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 did fail her. Yeah, we're supposed to have moved on from that. Era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Welcome back to you Talk Today. It is 6.26. We'll have the weather in just a moment no. with Naz. But here's what else is coming up in the programme. A Brazilian woman, <clears throat> my friends, good morning. This is brilliant. A Brazilian woman, what brilliant, is arrested after she allegedly wheeled a dead man into a bank to take out a loan. Uh, we'll talk about that in the papers next. And at 9.30, Nicola's taking me to Lloyd's. Mm. Well, chaos in Dubai just before 7. Travel guru Simon Calder has the latest on the thousands of Brits who've been affected by those flights across the globe. And has Prince Harry finally cut all ties with the UK at 9.20? Royal editor Sarah Houston talks us through this residency update that could signal a clear break from Britain from Prince Harry. But... Oh, first, it's, sorry, I, I wasn't sure if you just died. Uh, first, it's time to have a look you want to wheel at me somewhere? the weather with Naz. But before we talk about weather, yeah, yeah, yeah. let's talk about this chaos that's happening oh, in Dubai mm. and allegations of cloud seeding. What does that all about? mean, man? I don't understand What's this? cloud seeding? Cloud seeding is a way of manipulating the weather, and it's been around for ever actually. Uh, so basically, um, particles of substances are dispersed into the air via like rockets or planes. And these particles are things like, well, common substances use a potassium iodide or salt, like table salt. And that adds to the condensation in a rain cloud to add more moisture and therefore more rainfall to come. So why would it be used? So it could be used, uh, and Dubai are doing this, for areas where they've got below average rainfall to help boost the rainfall amounts in really dry question. areas. But it's also used in another way. China famously used it for the Olympics in 2008 to stop the rainfall and any cloud in the sky there for their opening ceremony so they can have the fireworks display. And it's actually been around since the 40s. It's been around for a long, but, long time. But having been to Dubai lots of times, right... It is known for not having a cloud in the sky. So if there's a, if there's like a drought and there's, how do you, if you're firing that stuff into clouds and there's no clouds, are you creating clouds by doing that? No, you that? have to fire it into clouds. But there aren't any clouds in Dubai. Yeah, but there are Higher at times. Oh, the, the climate in Dubai is generally dry, that's correct. Yeah. And their average rainfall for um, April is 15, one five millimetres. Wow. They had over a year's worth of their rainfall they in 24 hours. They had several inches in about an hour. And so is that why these accusations of cloud seeding have come about then? Because it's so... Yes, but it's... It, it's I, I think it's probably not likely because okay. this was 
forecasts by meteorologists around the globe. So you're not going to cloud you you, if you know there's going to be stormy conditions. And this mm. was very extreme and very unusual. Yes, they do have extreme thundery downpour weather during their winter period. It isn't unusual. But what is unusual is the fact that it was a cutoff low. So basically it stopped any other weather fronts coming through and it drew up so much warmth and moisture into the air that held so much rainfall and therefore there were I, heavy uh, amounts of rain. Next question. Climate change? No, no, get lost. Yeah, yeah uh, most can I, likely. Can I, just most say, likely. can I just say, I mean, obviously, I don't wish flooding on anybody, but I'm really pleased that they're suffering as we've suffered for the last six months in Dubai because um, all those rich I, people I wouldn't in the sun. agree. People have died. No, they haven't died. Cars uh, a bit. Right, good. We'll retract that, people. Have. Right, crack on then. Thanks. There is a bit of rain here, uh, but there will be some sunshine around too. Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. Good morning. We are seeing cloud and rain for many parts of the UK for today. But for some, there will be some sunshine. And that's most likely across southern areas, is that cloud and rain is moving its way steadily southwards. But once it does clear away in the next 24 hours, we start to see high pressure move in. So what does that mean? That means that we will see the winds become lighter. We'll see drier conditions overall across the UK and just in time for the weekend. And there will be a bit of sunshine about as well. So back to the here and now. And uh, yes, it's already rather cloudy and damp across the northwest of Scotland and Northern Ireland. Everywhere else, though, it's a mostly fine and sunny start to the day. Quite a chilly start, but fine. And then we see that cloud and rain steadily move its way southwards across much of Scotland, Northern Ireland, Northern England, the north of Wales later this afternoon as well. So the mid-afternoon picture across Scotland is that of cloudy skies, outbreaks of rain, most of it light and patchy, also quite blustery, so feeling quite cool with that cloud, wind and rain. Northern Ireland becoming a bit drier with a bit of brightness before the day is out but then northern England the north of Wales later parts of the Midlands before the end of the day will see outbreaks of rain that sunshine turning hazier across central parts of England and Wales but I think along the southwest in fact for much of the south coast of England it will be largely dry and sunny and feeling warmest there with the lighter winds now into tonight that front continues its sort of journey further southwards so patchy rain likely down towards central and southern parts of England and Wales further north there will be clearer skies developing it remains blustery through the night so as a result it won't be too cold and it actually should be a mostly frost free night although a patchy frost is likely in some rural spots and then for tomorrow that front eventually clears away we'll see bright or sunny spells developing a much drier day overall but there will be some showers about particularly around central and eastern areas but from the west that high pressure system starts to nudge its way in so from the west sunnier skies developing and lighter winds so starting to feel warmer so for uh, Scotland for tomorrow, feeling slightly milder with the lighter winds. Northern Ireland, England and Wales also seeing lots of sunshine, but there will be some showers around central and eastern areas, eventually fading away later. Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. You about that? Thanks, Naz. Interesting. Right, time to go through today's papers with the Mail on Sunday's Anna Michael Lover and broadcaster Sean McDonald. Anna, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. No, I love it. Morning, Sean. Sean, we're going to kick off with the front page of the Times. We've been talking about it this morning. Uh, Tory MP demanded thousands of pounds from party aid, saying that he'd been locked up by bad people. Yeah, this is Mark Menzies, or Mingus, as he would be referred to in Scotland. He's an MP for Fylde. Yeah. Um, this is, uh, when I was reading this story, I was thinking, although it's pretty intense, it's almost borderline comical. And the comical <laughs> element comes when we get to the dog uh, aspect of the story. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. Basically, Mark seems to be on a night out. He calls his, I think, one of his one of his volunteers, Aids? sorry, at his age, yeah, elderly woman, and he says, I need about £5,000. Um, she says, I can't do that. It's about quarter past three in the morning. She contacts his office manager, who then the next day deals with it. By the time that she, she gets to deal with it, she has to cash in an ISA to take out six and a half thousand pounds to give him this money. Now, you don't have to be Sherlock Holmes to take a stab in the dark or to deduce what was going on mm -hmm. while you were with some shady people who were demanding six and a half thousand pounds for you, um, or from you, sorry. There's a further four thousand pounds. There are various other instances. The next day, he asked for 35,000 pounds to pay for medical bills. Now, I do believe we have an NHS, which is free at the point of use. So again, you can maybe make your own assumptions. Um, he has maybe gone under the radar for a lot of people. That'll probably be because about 10 years ago, there were accusations of paying the, for a the, bit. 
paying for a Brazilian rent boy. Which, these are all we have well, to do this, Sean. You know that these yeah, are all allegations, all allegations. which another, he denies. He denies strenuously. Another allegation. Um, he was. Uh, it's alleged that he got an acquaintance's dog drunk at a party, and when challenged over it, they had a fight. Now again. It's an allegation, but... And the if, dog had a fight. Yeah. Well, exactly. But if this, if this is true, then he's one sick puppy, by the way. <laughs> hey, good. Uh, Anna, my, 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 my thing that I started with, I think Nick would agree with me, and I don't, I'm not even bothered about people saying Tories or Labour or whatever the others are. We deserve better from our MPs. They're an absolutely shocking disgrace, so many of them, aren't they? I mean, listen, they, they are human. There is that, but, yes. yeah, I, of course. Of and course how do they do. think of if they've got a rent does. boy that they're not going to be caught? I, just, I don't get it, can Anna. I, can I add as well, this money has apparently never been paid back, not a penny. Wow, OK. I mean, it's, it's so depressing, isn't it? We were talking about it earlier in the show. Of all the people, 70-odd million people in the country, and these are the ones that we have <coughs> running it. Yeah. It's quite disappointing, particularly for the people of Lancashire. I'm from mm. Lancashire, my parents still live there, and they've got Scott Benton, obviously gone from Blackpool South, and now this guy from The Fylde. It's uh, yeah, very disappointing. All hot on the heels of a of a honey trap scandal. Honey trap scandal so. as well. And I think it's very dangerous when we say they've had the whip taken away because it seems to me that most of them like the whip. To be honest, <laughs> uh, Anna, uh, the Express front page. We're back to Rwanda. Rwanda, seconds, Jeremy. Or I might fall asleep, my darling. It's it's delayed again. It, shocked. You're shocked. You'll be shocked to hear that flights are not taking off next week or, or any time particularly soon. Um, it's been, been another bit of ping pong. Ping pong with the lords. What's the point? To It'll it? get passed, but the Lords are doing their thing. The government's rejecting their amendments. There was frustration that it didn't get passed this week, but... What they've... Um, the, the amendment that they've uh, suggested this time is basically saying anybody who has previously helped the British forces, right, yeah. abroad, shouldn't be automatically sent to Rwanda. You'd agree with that, would you? I just don't agree with any of it. Oh, OK, there we go. No, but, I mean, Rwanda's an absolute joke. You've got 30 seconds, Sean. No more. Rwanda? I think it absolutely suits the government down to the ground that these things are being delayed because it then it allows it? well because it allows them and it helps them to turn it into an issue when it comes to voting, saying, you know, we are the only ones who can stop these I, I would have agreed peers. with you six months ago, mate, but when the British people said we don't want a tax cut, by the way, because we know we're going to have to pay it back, my argument now is, is the British people mm. are so fed up and more switched on than they've ever been and they're not going to fall for that. They're going to go, this is a waste of money. We should be able to process these people and either let them stay or get them out. As Just to quickly further add, James cleverly said that, you know, the House of Lords, they're preventing um, uh, safer routes, or they're preventing them from dealing with it, but they're the ones that are sort of bro blocking or preventing safe travel to come here anyway, which is why they're coming via boats, via the channel, yeah. which is how this... It's just this self-perpetuating cycle. Yeah. Um, very briefly, Angela Rayner, and then my favourite story ever. Um, Angela Rayner, again, not just, just an opinion. Nick, I think, shares this to a degree. I don't care about Tory or Labour. If you are standing for office... I, don't, I mean, Hugo <coughs> Rick, consider it's not like the Tory billionaires. I don't care if it's £1 or a £10 million. Pounds. If you go to public office, why don't you just release the information, Angela Rayner? Come on. Listen, absolutely. And I, I think it's galling to hear um, some of her colleagues uh, going out on the airwaves and saying just because they're not in government, they shouldn't be held to the same standard because it, they, number one, could potentially be in government very soon yeah. and she could be the deputy prime minister. And number two, all politicians should be held to the same standard, which is a very high standard. And so, if you point the finger and again gets pointed at you, you have to understand that happens. I mean, listen, I don't actually think that's the key part of it um, yeah. uh, but because I also don't want to dissuade politicians from ever commenting on anyone's affairs because because one problem you have sometimes with these standard stories is you can't actually get an MP to comment on them because I have had one say once well if something happens to me one day I don't want people to say sure. oh this is... so so it's not about that it's it's literally about the issue the fact that she's not answering questions she keeps coming out and saying I've answered all the questions but we've got another front page today in the Telegraph saying Rainer faces new homes tax questions she of course denies wrongdoing but isn't clarifying, isn't publishing this this dossier of tax advice that she says she's got, um, mm. and it just it's leading to more and more it's questions going popping away. up. Sean, where where do you stand on this? Do you think that there's been unfair scrutiny placed on Angela Rayner, or do you think that actually you know all MPs should be held to that standard? Yeah, I think they should be held to that standard. If they're in public office, then you know there should be that transparency. I think when you step into that job with the privileges and the power that you hold, that you then you do sort of forego <laughs> yeah. certain other. And discrep or allowances that members of the public would. I don't would be think. I don't to. think we should, when it comes to, to standards in public life, 
be talking about uh, the, the sides. I think Sean and, and Nick, I think we're all spot on. Well, if you, if it, you, you sign up for the charter, mate, yeah. follow the rules so you get your fingers And it being burned. a small amount of money is absolutely irrelevant because people get arrested for not paying 50p yeah. on their licence fee. Well, mm. uh, d d Whatever, the other day you know. Hugo was like, well, the Tories are 500,000. It doesn't matter if it's three mm. pounds. It's no. what Sean said, it's yeah. the morality. Yeah. Sean, you've got to do this story. We're taking a minute extra here. I'm not even having a debate. Go on, this yeah. is absolutely fantastic. I mean, this is absolutely nuts. So this is in Rio de Janeiro. Erica de Souza Vieira Nunes has been arrested because she wheeled her what appeared to be her slightly comatose uncle into a bank to um, to get a two, th two and a half thousand pounds loan. Um, he his head's fallen all over the place. It turned out that he was dead. So this is some weekend at Bernie stuff. And can I say, by the way, right? I feel I should actually point this out. I've, I just randomly saw the video as I was scrolling on Twitter, and it's pretty horrible. He's it's obviously horrific. dead. I mean, the guy looks as if he's still warm. It's yeah, it's it's quite scary. And, and actually, you can hear on the video mm -hmm. that the bank teller, I presume, is saying. He doesn't look very well. That so, was the uh, understatement of the century. I mean, <laughs> he's dead. It's uh, Anna. But scary. I, do, I just have to highlight the headline: "Corpse and Robbers." You couldn't get any better. Very good. Which, headline, which newspaper? It's the Star. Yeah, the Star. Oh, I mean, geez, two and a half grand. She but must also, have been. like, do we know anything about where she actually? Got the body well, that's the from. thing, but she's been. She has. Was been she related a, to the body? Or apparently, she found it she's. I don't know, but she's, she's been charged with theft, yeah. theft and vilification of a corpse, which is quite the, the rap sheet. Like what? Are you she's getting up one morning and going. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go down to that funeral parlour at the end of the road. I'm going to get one that's just gone. Horrible. I'm going to pop down to Lloyd's Bank and I'm going to get myself a loan. Where are you taking me later? <laughs> oh, oh, there we go. I presume you have an account there, Jeremy, man of the people. Thank you so much, Anna and Sean. Is that Sean. in the Strand? Yes. Of course they do. Yeah, Crack exactly. On. There we go. He can't even remember. He just sends his driver to drop him off. Right, thank you, Anna and Sean. Wow. We'll be back. No bitterness there from the woman the who next. has to take the bus. I do indeed. Transport next. Well, yes, let's transport <laughs> you away to sunnier climates oh. now. As summer holidays are just around the corner and a new survey has revealed the top cheapest destinations for package holidays to get us all in the mood. Nice. It does more. God, I love this man. Travel journalist Simon Calder. Before I say, where are you, Simon? Oh, that's boring. I thought you'd be on a beach somewhere, my but friend. where are you? Where in the world where are, are you? Where in the world are you? I'm in Manchester, England. Yay! Um, um, I'm actually here looking at um, some of the many cancellations that are going in and out of uh, uh, Dubai. Um, it's been an absolutely shocking few days, as we were hearing from now, so maybe we can talk about that. But let's talk about sunnier things. And, uh, yeah, really good survey here by um, Witch Travel. They've looked at over 4,500 holidays these are actual proper package holidays for the first week in august and the interesting thing is first of all they cost a flipping fortune you're looking at typically upwards of 800 pounds per person family of four few ice creams you're, you're um yeah you're talking already over a thousand pounds a pop um interesting those destinations kalimnos in greece if you're thinking i don't know where that is well you're quite right um if you can imagine the island of Koz, which is tucked in just beside bodrum in turkey it's a 40 minute ferry ride from there uh, you've then got gorgeous thassos in greece which is my favorite here um you that's in northern uh, Greece. So you actually fly uh, into Karbala and then you pop again on another little ferry. And that's uh, lovely. And off you go to uh, enjoy the beautiful wooded hills and lovely beaches. It's a great place. Not enough people go there. And finally, in the Ionian Islands, they're the ones on the left hand side of Greece. Uh, Lefkada is looking reasonably good. So first three places to Greece. Now, that's quite a surprise given on how far away it is. The first near destination is the uh, Costa Brava of Spain. And that's so great because you've got um, uh, th this wonderful stretch of coastline between the French Spanish border going down to uh, Barcelona. You've also got some very cheap deals there. You can fly into uh, Girona, which itself is a lovely city. And then finally in Italy, 
the Lido de Yesolo, which is the um, uh, string of hotels um, facing across from Venice. And the great thing about that is that if you're on a day trip, well, there's nothing better. You just hop on the uh, boat to Venice. Although, bear in mind, a week today, the very first charges come in. It's going to cost you an extra five euros, Jeremy, uh, to um, to spend the day in Venice. Well, patently, I'm not going to do that. Can I just honestly, you, I love you so much, man. You're so enthusiastic. Our cheap uh, package holiday. Uh, is it becoming more and more expensive? I, I was looking down that list. The Amalfi Coast to Grand, that's quite a deal. But for a lot of people, on a serious note, any sort of money, really difficult at this moment in time. And many people won't have the luxury of going away this summer. Uh, any, I, I mean, those are the cheapest deals. There are other ways of getting abroad. There are other ways of having a holiday, aren't there, my friend? Yeah. Now, look, we're yeah, looking right. here, um, which has done really well, looking at the first week in uh, August. If you are lucky enough to live in the north of England or southern Scotland, you can actually uh, take direct action, which is playing off the different holidays. So, for example, um, schools typically break up in Scotland at the end of June. Take a holiday in the first week of July from one of the English airports, typically Newcastle, Leeds, Bradford or Manchester, you're going to be paying much less than you would from Edinburgh or Glasgow. And then at the end of the summer holidays, so you know, last week in August, for instance, Scottish schools have been all been back for a week or two. Uh, so if you're in the north of England, you just hop across to Edinburgh, Glasgow, maybe Prestwick and fly from there. Um, otherwise, if you want a cheap holiday, you're in the southern half of Britain, probably part everybody in the car if you're lucky enough to have one um, get across the channel and go camping in lovely northern France sounds gorgeous but what about Dubai Simon we've spoken about sunny climates usually Dubai of course one of the sunniest places to go and visit but not this week a bit wet this week yeah, it's about 48 hours since these these apocalyptic uh, rains started pouring in. You can see the scenes there, absolutely terrible. And we saw yesterday effectively gridlock in Dubai. Bear in mind that this is probably the biggest global aviation hub in the world. Um, things are now getting back to normal. In fact, um, a couple of British Airways flights actually landed more or less on time this morning. But Emirates, this enormous airline which normally is a well-oiled machine they've had huge problems overnight i've just been checking all of the flights if you were only six hours late as some people from manchester glasgow uh, heathrow gatwick were you're doing pretty well because um, there are an awful lot of flights uh, three from heathrow one from Birmingham, one from Stansted, one from Manchester, completely cancelled. Shorter delays, um, uh, four hours from Newcastle. But if you get to Dubai, of course, your problems are only just beginning because your connecting flight quite possibly won't be there. And if you think it's bad going from a UK airport, well, at least you've got the air passenger rights rules to protect you, which basically just means the airline's got to get you where you need to be as soon as possible and get you a hotel and get your meals. If you're stuck in New Zealand, so the other side of the earth, those rules don't apply. And therefore, it might well be on your dime that you've got to pay for a hotel and you're just basically sitting there and uh, waiting to get out. It's a, a really tough problem for tens, quite possibly hundreds of thousands of people. And I'm afraid it's going to take a week or two before everybody gets where they need no, to be. We, we have to leave it there. I, we're in awe of you, man. Honestly, I, I've taken to ringing him if my train's late now. You're amazing. <laughs> uh, you, SC, Simon. we'll see you very soon. Thank you. I hope you get out of Manchester alive, my friend. Good with those floods and everything else in Dubai, isn't it? Thank you very much, my friend. Well, still to come on Talk Today, they'll be rowing up to 15 hours a day. We'll be meeting the inspiring crew attempting to become the first team to row 8,000 miles across the Pacific Ocean. Are they mad? This is Talk Today. It is 6.46. Good morning. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat go. When JK Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. 
Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite Yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. I might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I was just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Worm is it? There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. That's quite a small statue, then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> ah, <laughs> a trans... Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, what, did fail to, her. Yeah, it was another era. She was 22. Mm. We were supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Uh, welcome back to Talk Today. It, what is it? Uh, 10 to 7. Now, next year, this is amazing. An all-female rowing team will attempt to become the first crew ever to row 8,000 miles across the Pacific Ocean non-stop and unsupported and all for charity. Well, Miriam Payne, Jess Rowe... And Jess Rowe? Fantastic. And Brilliant. Lottie Hopkinson will travel from Peru in South America and not stop until they get to Sydney Harbour. Uh, to tell us more about this epic journey, they're here, fantastic. It, really good to have you on. Miriam, Jess and Lottie. Jess, that's an amazing name, Jess Rowe. It's um, incredible. Why? I mean, this is for charity. We'll talk about that in a minute, which is incredible, and I respect you all so much for that. Why? Oh, I guess we can, so... So you've got experience in, in rowing. It's not just you just decided to do this. You've done similar things before? Yeah, so Jess and I met from rowing across the Atlantic Ocean. She did it as a four. I did solo. Um, Lottie's a learner rower, but catching up very yeah. quickly. <laughs> you rowed across the Atlantic on your own? Yes. And you've done it in a four? Yes. And you've just been on a river? Uh, I went on a river the first time last year, so <laughs> we're very new to rowing. That's incredible. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. So talk to me, how long is this going to take? Yeah. Up to six months, but hopefully not, not so long. So for six months, you're just going to be on the boat, or do you stop and get off? Just stay on yeah, the boat. Just on the boat. Yeah. For six, for six months. months. As long as we don't run out of food. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, we might have to stop. So talk to me about food. What are you yeah. going to be eating during that six-month period? So we'll be eating freeze-dried food that you rehydrate with water. Um, so we'll have about 3,000 calories a day from that. And then the other um, two and a half will be snacks, so like chocolate, biscuits, quite unhealthy food, just to give us all the calories that we <laughs> so need. So about 5,500 calories a day in order Probably. to yeah. Yeah. survive. And storing all that in a boat that I think you said was 29 feet only, and you've got to sleep and you've... How does it fit in? I mean, this is I extraordinary. Think it's it's going to yeah. be like Princess and the Pea, but five yeah. layers of freeze-dried food. Yeah, yeah, quite. And yeah. you won't have any water on board with you, is that right? How do you end up hydrating yourselves? So we've got a desalinator, a water maker machine, and that'll filter out the seawater and make it safe for drinking, washing, everything that we need. It's uh, unbelievable. It is, isn't it? I know what you're going to ask now. <laughs> oh, Because well. if I did, if I asked, I'd be, I'd be slagged off. We've spoken about eating, we've yep. spoken about sleeping. There's another Pulling. area. Let's just cut to the chase. How Pulling. do you go to the toilet? Oh, right, OK. 
It's just a bucket situation, bucket sadly. And chuck it. <laughs> bucket yeah. and chuck it. Bucket and chuck it. Bucket and chuck it. You've got a nickname for your bucket, I believe. Is that right? Yeah. We do indeed. What's dumpy. his name? Dumpy. <laughs> dumpy That's bucket. his nickname for me, to be fair. I bad. think, to be fair, I, I, I need a dumpy behind this desk to be honest. <laughs> Getting to my age, I can't make it to the toilet. I'm um, on a serious note. I mean, can, can I also just say, I mean, it's extraordinary and what a challenge, but you are doing this for a charity that deserves a big shout out this yes. morning because one of the things, I mean, you're in a position where you can do this. Tell us about the Outward Bound Trust because I think this is fantastic. Yeah, so the Outward Bound Trust um, teach kids valuable life skills for adventures. So they have lots of residential places throughout the UK. Um, they'll try and partner with schools, especially 80% um, of their places are funded. So they really focus on trying to get kids that normally wouldn't have the opportunity, maybe due to financial means, on these courses, teaching them confidence, resilience, um, and just help setting them up for the future. I love the fact that you can take kids out of inner city areas who would never have that opportunity yeah. because of where they've been born or the situation they find themselves in to, to, to experience outdoor life. I think it's a really, really fantastic really idea. Is. I'm dying to know about I'm phones. dying to know if you've got space in your boat to take her with you. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? Well, I've got time. Um, how do you use phones? How do you contact friends That's, and family. They're rowing for charity. There'll be no internet. There'll be no WhatsApp. You're <laughs> well, just going to be devastated. You can't do Will WhatsApp. Will you be able to use... Oh. You haven't got Wi-Fi in the boat, no. have you? No, we have um, sat phones, satellite phones, um, and then we'll have um, a device that helps us send back photos and videos quite compressed, so it's quite limited. How do you fit we won't this be scrolling. All in no scrolling. No scrolling. No scrolling. So make sure it's quite simple. Feet. Is that 29 feet? How long's that? No, no 29, 29 feet. feet. <laughs> they can probably be, yeah, from here to, like... I guess the end of the studio. Maybe. Yeah, have you got right. sponsors for this, or are you, you, I mean, are you being, you know, you're, you're raising money for the Outward Band Trust, but is this sponsored? Have you got it sponsored? Working on it at the moment. Yeah, we've got some great sponsors so far. Fantastic. Um, that have yeah. really helped us to get to this point. And you, you won't be starting it for another year, but this is why you're coming on the show today mm. to talk to people about mm -hmm. what you're doing to try and generate some interest. I think it's absolutely fantastic. So do I. Is there a way that we can follow your progress as you'll be making this journey? So you said you'd be sending out photographs, etc. Do you have... I, I want to scroll Instagram for you right now. Will you have, a, <laughs> like, a, a social media page? Yeah, so we've we've already got um, a TikTok page and an Instagram page. Fabulous. Um, so and a website. So and the website as well, so... We'll have um, a social media manager who we send our footage to right. and they can put it on Keep for us. And how well do you know each other? Because yeah. I'm fascinated by it. <laughs> just the three of you for six months. What if you have a falling out? You're going to have an argument, aren't you? <laughs> you have to. There's no way you can hide, though. I'm just happy I've got people to talk to this time. So. <laughs> yeah, I suppose if you've done it solo, I mean, then it must be nice. It's you rode across the Atlantic and you and I get bored <laughs> flying over the ocean. It's extraordinary. Uh, listen, on, on a serious note, unbelievable. Um, if you are watching and listening and you're more interested, the Outward Bound Trust is a fantastic charity. And Miriam, Jess and Lot um, they want support, they want sponsorship, and so they should. They're doing a great, great job. And you sure you haven't got space in that boat? <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to weigh them down, Jeremy Kyle. I don't. I think you'd be a very good coxswain. <laughs> that even That's thing? somebody that steers it. Um, I'm also, just really quickly, yep. you're going to be absolutely shattered from this. Yep. Um, yeah. <laughs> what, what kind of toll is this going to take on mm. your bodies? 15 hours a day, is that right? Yeah, we'll be, be quite sleep deprived, so we might be rowing two hours on, two hours off, three on, three off, um, probably have a few different variations of our mm -hmm. routine. So will there only be two of you at a time rowing, is that right? Yeah, yeah. we've wow. only got two yeah. rowing seats. So. I just, I just yeah. honestly, I mean, and the other one, be, honestly, the other one will be having a poo asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honestly right. completely delighted you came on the show, and <laughs> so anybody wonderful. watching that wants to be involved um, can go, uh, what's it called, seize the day. Yeah. See what we've done yeah. there? S-E-A-S. -E we wish you the best of luck. Let us know how it goes. We'll certainly follow you, all right? Thank you so Thank much, you. Miriam. Yes. Thank you, gang. And Lottie, we wish you all the best on that adventure. Well, well, still to come, and this about sums up why I get arsy on this show, and I get told off for saying that. But we're returning to a top seat. A Tory MP accused of misusing £14,000 worth of campaign funds to pay bad people, and these three girls rowing across the Atlantic to raise money for a great cause. That's what's wrong with our political system. We're coming back in three, and do join us, because otherwise we'll be talking to ourselves. Ta Ra. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman. Trans woman is a man.
Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite Yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get. This. <laughs> but 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 I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight-pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I was just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on what just <laughs> happened. <laughs> Whoa, <miss it. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr Khan apparently wasn't <laughs> too keen on that. I'm sorry. Huh? I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, <laughs> a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> <you've got> <laughs> Yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family, and if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist we're, we're, we're did fail her. Yeah, we're yeah, supposed to have moved on from that. Era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. On TV, on radio, and on your smartphone, this is Talk TV. This is Talk Today with Jeremy Kyle and Nicola Thorpe. A very good morning to you. It's 7 o'clock on Thursday, the 18th of April. It absolutely is. You would talk today, my friends, on TV, on radio, of course, online, and your smart speaker. And these are Thursday morning's top stories. Kidnap threats and misuse of thousands of pounds of campaign funds. The extraordinary allegations against Tory MP Mark Menzies now under investigation. Wow. A medicine meltdown. How the UK is facing huge shortages due to global supply issues. We'll speak to a GP and a pharmacist with the update this hour. And dreams dashed. Ha <laughs> ha. Arsenal and Manchester City crash out of the Champions League. And it's looking cloudy with outbreaks of rain for many parts of the UK today, but there will be sunshine for some. I'll have the details in the forecast a little later. Thanks now. It's just gone 7 o'clock Thursday morning. And now, with the headlines, the first lady of news, Emily Rose Adams. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Good morning. A Conservative MP has been suspended from his party after allegations in The Times that he misused campaign funds. £14,000 from donors is said to have been transferred to Mark Menzies' bank accounts and used for private medical expenses. The MP for File in Lancashire disputes the claims which are being investigated by his party. The Israeli PM Benjamin Netanyahu says his country will make its own decisions. It's after the Foreign Secretary Lord Cameron met with him in Tel Aviv, where he argued that nobody wants to see escalation in the Middle East. Israel's considering a response to Iran's rocket attack on Saturday. Well, Middle East lecturer Israel's Reichman University Mir Javandanfar has told Talk Today Israel has little choice but to respond. The Iranian regime is establishing a red line here. They're saying that every time from now on you attack one of our, one of our people, one of our military officials, we're going to do that to you. And if Israel doesn't respond, then Israel will, is going to have to live with that red line. And this is something that no Israeli leader would accept. 
Travel chaos continues at the world's second busiest airport in Dubai as the city's hit by the worst rainfall in 75 years. Cars have been submerged and there have been long traffic jams on the city's main highway. More than a year and a half's rainfall fell in just a few hours and forecasters say more bad weather's on the way. Police have broken up an international cybercrime gang which scammed people on an industrial scale. It created a website based in the UK which allowed criminals to steal almost half a million card numbers. Police targeted the site LabHost on the dark web which helped criminals send fake online payment links to victims. A new analysis suggests many of the cheapest European summer holidays this year are in surprising destinations. Consumer group Witch has worked out that the least expensive are locations generally considered pricey, like the Greek islands or Italy's Amalfi Coast. The cheapest average price was for breaks on the tiny Greek island of Kalimnos at £847. Those are the headlines. I'll have another update in an hour. That's what I meant, by the way, when Simon Calder was saying the Amalfi Coast. Italy and the Amalfi Coast is quite expensive. Do you know what? It's been a while since I've been on a seven-day holiday, but even 800-odd quid sounds... Definitely gone up. ...very expensive. Mm -hmm. I would have spent... Probably the last time I went on holiday, we'd have spent that for two people. Not you. You'd spent millions, I know. <laughs> do you see? This is, a, this is an apt... You want to go on holiday, Private do you? Private jet to Barbados. You do, you do want to go on holiday, do you? Yes. Can be arranged very soon. <laughs> uh, just gone <laughs> seven o'clock. Uh, uh, messing. Uh, listen, Emily Rose Adams, thank you very much indeed. Can I just say thank you as well for your, for your input this morning? As ever, we want you to be involved. Talk today at talk.tv, text to 8722. I'm going to go on and on about our top story. Conservative MP Mark Menzies is under investigation overnight after allegations that he misused campaign funds. Apparently rang a 78-year-old aide at three o'clock in the morning and said, I find myself in, this is alleged, by the way, an uncompromising compromising position and I need six and a half thousand pounds. Uh, this, this poor woman the next day took it out of an ISA. Uh, he's had the whip withdrawn, whether he wants that or not. I, I've been going on about this and now Nick actually agrees with me. What on earth are we doing with these people, the politicians? It's They're an incredible. absolute disgrace, He, of course, man. denies the claims, but yeah. the Tory party are investigating. I've taken the whip away. Well, quite. <laughs> uh, Phil has texted in his views to 8722. He says, good morning, Jeremy and Nicola. Unfortunately, our MPs have forgotten why they are MPs and why they were elected in the first place. After tasting power, they assume they're untouchable. It's a shame they've sunk so low. Good morning to Dan from Kenny. said, we have 40 years of non reinvestment in literally every public and private sector, and both the Tories and the Labour Party are to blame. I counted 25 road closure signs yesterday. It's absolutely disgusting. Their MPs have turned this beautiful country into this current mess. Whilst you... That's the point that we're making. You're supposed to do a job for us, man. It's all about rent boys and drink and drugs, isn't it? It's well, outrageous. Well, not all MPs. We can't tar them all with the same brush. No, but you'd have to say, Nick, with respect, for a small There's number a... of 640 people, there is a story every day across... It's... Every political advice. Look at the rain of things. She still won't come out. Everybody's seemingly at it. Absolutely astounding. Do you think that everybody in the UK is just as bad? Or is, it, is there a higher ratio within MPs? Or is it just because they face more scrutiny? You face scrutiny in public life. Here's what I think. And actually, let's bring in Charlie Rowley. I've had nowhere I, near as much fun. Can yeah. I, let's just bring you straight in, Charlie. And we're talking mm. about Mark Menzies. Here's the thing that I said to Nick this morning, right? Laugh at me if you're going to. Happy birthday. By the way, Charlie Rowley, 21 today. <laughs> um, Thank you. Imagine if you were standing... Uh, for a position as an MP, mm -hmm. and you started your campaign, you've been an advisor, and you said, just to let everybody know, including the press, I've been divorced a couple of times, I've got four children, this isn't me, I mean, I've been divorced more than that. Um, you know, I, I took drugs at school uh, when I was at college once. Um, I, I, I once, you know... Blah, 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 blah. Imagine if you were absolutely open so you could go to your constituency with no skeletons in your closet. Would you get elected? Because I think you would. I think you probably would. So um, why don't politicians be more honest with the British people then? Well, I, I, I think most are, I think. OK. And I like to think most are. And I think it's but, to but Nicholas point. But you don't understand the numbers we're talking about it, to, Totally, totally. And I think, look, you know, there are scandals that I think happen uh, clearly when people become MPs, mm. and your text uh, there... Uh, I think is right. You know, people get into politics, the power sometimes gets a bit too much or sure. there is too much of an uh, uh, elevated position of oneself or the ego is massaged uh, so much that you think you are above uh, the law. Seemingly, Lord. Charlie, not just the ego. And, and if, um, uh, if and there'll be many scandals surrounding uh, sex and, uh, and other abuses that shouldn't take place. Um, but I, I, I think, look, you know, it, it, you've got to be genuine, actually, I think, in public life. People can forgive. Exactly as you were saying earlier on, Angela Rayner, if something has gone wrong, because Angela Rayner's had a difficult past, you know, more probably difficult than most politicians. You know, people can forgive 
uh, people, Boris Johnson, not someone who's uh, not committed a misdemeanor once or twice, but people forgive him because it's Boris, because it's genuine, because it's his character. You can overlook the faults that we all have sure. if you're open about it because you're getting on to do a job and you're right, doing right. a good job. But when you try and hide things or if you try yeah, and play yeah. it different, that's yeah. when I think the public do find this um, uh, incredibly uh, uh, difficult to take because someone has fundamentally presented themselves as a character to the public, to the electorate, and they've turned out to be uh, something Tell else. about earlier in 2014. I think this is fascinating with your point earlier about yeah, forgiven. Yeah, in, in 2014, he was allegedly involved <coughs> in um, another scandal. It says here on the front page of the Sunday Mirror from that year, Tory MP quits in drugs and rent boy scandal. Uh, and yet he remained within the party. He's, you know, what was he, trade envoy now, or was? Got re-elected, though, as Charlie said last mm. hour. That's yeah, the thing. He got they could have thrown him out, right? By, well, well, he got, and he got re-elected by his constituents, presumably. But what do you think the issue is with the culture in Westminster? Do you think that the culture creates the people or do you think yeah. that actually it attracts these kind of characters to work in those positions? Or does it create them? Does it seduce them, in a way, the culture? I, d I, d I don't think it does. I don't think it seduces you because you never quite know what it's like until you're, so you're actually a, there. Yeah. But I think it certainly adds to the pressure and if you are turning up every day if you're voting on legislation if you're changing the laws of the land and you're getting pressure from different campaign organizations if you're getting pressure from constituents if you're receiving a barrage of abuse day in day out if you're away from home if you don't have a family or if you're quite lonely and you can be uh, lured into the uh, routine of you know daily uh, there's always an event happening in Westminster so you can always get a drink you can always go to lunch you can always be lobbied by a journalist or a campaign organization or there is uh, a lot of socializing that goes on and then when you eventually or, or effectively get home and you close that door and you haven't got that adrenaline running or if you haven't got that mm. sort of uh, uh, um, uh, you know something to do or that shot in the arm that keeps you going that because you, because you are an important um, person that hits exactly yeah. do, you, you look for it elsewhere you look for it elsewhere try and turn it around last time we were saying i was saying do you think we pay our politicians enough do you think they're attracting the wrong people let's turn that on its head with what you just described and i know this will go down like a lead balloon to a degree but let me get to the end of the sentence maybe it's just a less attractive job because of the things that you say not the money maybe the pressure is maybe maybe people will turn their backs on becoming mp's or prospective mp's for the for what they see but i don't know whether the world has changed mp's when i was growing up were supposed to be our elected representative not a bunch of sort of dysfunctional but then why should they not be dysfunctional everybody else is seemingly do you know what i mean maybe we put too much pressure on them maybe nobody you want to be an mp though don't you well, um, I, I, st I stood a few years ago. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm did not... you stand a few years ago? I did, yes, yeah, Where? in, in Halton, uh, just outside Liverpool. Um, so I don't know why I didn't win outside Liverpool no. as a Conservative, but, uh, but there we <laughs> did are. Did you get any votes? Uh, I think you'd be an excellent Over 10,000, over 10,000. 10, so, um, uh, it, uh, <laughs> it was a nice experience, but, um, but you're right. I think you've got to... I mean, you've got to be aware of politics. You've got to be aware of Westminster. You've got to be aware, I mm. think, uh, of just how you know you give so much to it, and you've got to be totally committed. It's a seven-day week job. When you're not in Westminster, you're back in your constituency. I suppose my argument um, is that there are plenty of people, men and women, who work away with families and don't end up with rent boys or ladies or drugs or drink or you know they work twelve hours, they get into their lorry or they sleep at the side of the road or they go to a friend's house. You know, some of the crew here will travel up from miles mm. away and leave their families to do their jobs. So. You know, it, it, when people talk to me about pressure, is there pressure on being 80 grand a year and you can have a drink and dinner every single night? I don't know. Well, I think it's also the paranoia within all political parties, because you sure. know, um, Keith Vance was another example who was chairman of the Home Affairs Select Committee that had a similar issue. Yes. To, but, you know, I think there's also just the, um, the daily pressure, but also just the paranoia within political parties, yeah. because you never quite know, even though you are a collective as a group of backbench MPs, whatever side of the divide you're on, uh, they're all individual. They all have their individual employees. They will have their individual diaries or individual lifestyles. You never quite know what, you know, your neighbour's doing next door, your uh, you know, fellow Conservative MP or who's, you know, on whose side of whatever the party divide is. And all of this allegedly resulted in Mark Menzies because of the pressure finding himself somewhere at three o'clock in the morning. I mean, it's an extraordinary story, man, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's, it's also the kind of arrogance sad. from so many MPs of thinking that they wouldn't get caught. Yes, or, yes. alternatively, stupidity. it's stupidity. Yeah. Mm. You know, uh, why would they take part in... Well, they, yeah, there's either an arrogance to go, I can do whatever I want, I'm so powerful, um, I won't get caught, or an arrogance to say, even if I get caught, it won't matter. 
or it's pure stupidity. Yes, or you either, um, to be perfectly you know, uh, frank about it, or you either front it up. If you've done nothing wrong, you know, you can, you know, you can engage in uh, party, you can go out as an MP, you can have a social life, you can have quite a colourful life if you want to have yes. one. If you're not hurting anyone, if you're not breaking the law, you do what you want. If you confront it up and say, this is me, but actually, you know, what I do in Westminster is, is, is over there. Good for but, you, yeah. you know, That's a very good point. You, could, I... you can do that, but when you start... That's what I meant when I said front out who you are and yes. what you are. Yes, yes. Yeah. and I think, because so often there becomes these these discussions you know, about banning all alcohol at, mm. at Westminster. OK, and I completely accept that, man. but we should be able to have a drink and not yes. engage in behaviour that hurts other people. Totally. And again, to be perfectly honest with you, um, uh, with everybody, I think, and, you know, we have to kind of wake up and stop clutching our pearls at times that, you know, some people are all uh, held up to such a high degree. That's you know, what I'm saying. That, that MPs are on online dating sites. Mm. You know, there will be MPs like members of the public that have exchanged explicit images, e A, with a partner or somebody else to, along the line. You know, this does go on. Um, it's not a new phenomenon. When you, when you get elected as a, as a new MP and say, I mean, that's really interesting what you said. Do you think there's, do you think they live in fear that they're going to be found out? Are, are we expecting them to be paragons of virtue too much? Do you expect Angela Rayner to be a paragon of virtue? I expect my elected representatives, if I'm being... Comp I take Charlie's point. First of all, I expect them to tell the truth. And secondly, yeah. I expect them to respect their job when they look at how this country is struggling. And genuine people, jams, are working 12 hours a day, people can't get jobs, all those sorts of things. I would then expect people on 80 grand a year not to be paragons of virtue, but to at least give me the impression mm. they care about what's going on in this country. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Not at 7 o'clock at night. Have a and drink, go on a dating mm. website, but don't yeah. take the out of the people who put you there. And and the number of allegations that, over a number of years, it seems to be, that mm. sacked up against Mark Menzies, I think, will... Um, even though, yes, he was re-elected in 2015 on the back of that 2014 scandal, he would have done the same in 2017 and 2019. You know, his constituents have given him, uh, I think... Uh, happy oh, birthday, Charlie Rowley. Happy birthday, Charlie Rowley. Oh, oh, we love you, you so much, oh. and we're so <laughs> grateful for you to come in on your oh, birthday. Man. You love that, don't Thank you? Thank you very much. Can we not set fire a... to it? I think I there's would... probably some sort of health and safety <laughs> regulation. I don't worry about that. The fact that we can't That's like so that. kind. Thank I want you, you to go That's home and eat that on your own. Well, I will. <laughs> I've, got no one, I've got no one else. We all want no. a piece. No. No. It's like red that. velvet. Yeah, she's going to eat it. Watch out. But happy, happy birthday, birthday mate. Charlie. Thank you so much. We it's... love you so very much, and you've been an absolute asset to this programme. Legend. And I've, we love you. I've loved coming on. I've loved being with you two every morning. Well, oh, good. The mornings I'm here. So thank Don't you very start. much for having me. Charlie, really happy birthday. How old is it today, seriously? 34. In an hour. In exactly an hour. Oh, you, were born at, you were born at 8.15? Yes, I was. Did yeah. you? 8.17, I think I was. Well, it's an hour and two minutes, then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Tim, thank you very much, A Conservative <laughs> advisor and birthday boy, Charlie Rowley. Though, uh, let's take a look at some of this morning's papers, front pages, as well as the allegations into Mark Menzies' campaign funds. The Times also features a blow for Richie Sunak after hopes of interest rate cuts. Significant ones are dashed, with inflation falling Slower than expected. So good news, but not really good news if you're concerned about the pound in your pocket. Well, the Mail published an exclusive poll that finds almost half of people don't want mm -hmm. a Starmer government. That's despite the Tories trailing their rival on defence, tax and migration. And American Idol, ideally, uh, Harry. Uh, the Sun says Prince Harry has cuddled ties with Britain as he officially registers as an American resident. Well, on to another story in the papers today. A new report has found that the UK is facing a new normal of medicine shortages. But believed to be due to global supply issues. Uh, the think tank, the Nuffield Trust, behind the study claims that the weakened trade links with the EU is likely to further weaken supply chains and threaten our ability to effectively respond to shortages. Well, despite the NHS reportedly spending millions trying to mitigate the supply issues, medical professionals are calling the crisis a national health emergency. Uh, joining us now, a good friend of the show, junior doctor, Dr Bashus. Uh, I've got the... I can't... Mukherjee. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, and pharmacist Torin Govind, I've got the right, Torin, thank you very much indeed. Uh, let's put this into specific layperson's terms, but because when people will wake up, widespread medicine shortages, genuinely? How concerned should people be? We should be concerned because every day, as a pharmacist, we're seeing patients who we cannot provide the medications that they need. And it's hours that our teams are spending to try and get hold of medication. And it's also disrupting for patients. You're getting a routine of taking your medication and then suddenly you turn up at the pharmacy and the pharmacy say, we can't get hold of it. And that is not because of us down at the pharmacy, because we're not making the drugs in the pharmacy, but down to the whole supply chain that is on top of the the pharmacy system and um, where we are absolutely struggling. And these manufacturers are 
suggesting things like uh, shortages of raw material, increase in prices. But we are hearing, as this report says, um, that Brexit has played a part in that. And, and, and the real reason for that is currently, before Brexit, we would be part of the European Medicines Agency for drugs approval. Now it's going to be in the UK where drugs are approved and we're much slower at doing that. And is it certain medications or is this widespread? It is certain. It's quite a few. So ADHD medications, HRT has been going on for a while. Um, yeah. It's it's frustrating um, because it is ongoing and we know that patients are also going online to try and source medications from all over the place yeah. in unregulated internet sources because they are desperate. And Dr Basher, we know that um, a lot of this has sadly been caused by the impact of leaving the European Union. We know that we're not going to be rejoining any time soon, but what kind of things can be put in place so that these shortages don't get worse? You know, I hear about the shortages and, of course, there's the impact of the pandemic and Brexit and everything else that's been happening in around the world, really, which is impacting, as rightly uh, commented by my colleague here. But at the same time, I do wonder how we are managing our funds within the NHS. I think it's quite archaic when we've had a million odd population increase with immigration for us to still be holding on to the free prescriptions for certain groups uh, when certain groups of patients are actually abusing the system and they're continuing to almost uh, cajole their GPs to prescribe them over-the-counter medications. And over the years, millions have been spent by the NHS on prescriptions for over-the-counter medications. I wish that we didn't have to be the... Uh, you know, sort of kind of gatekeepers of these medications and essentially having to make that choice in our consultations, telling patients, oh, I'm sorry, we can't prescribe you that. And then having that argument with that patient and, and making that choice, making that judgmental choice of whether a patient should or should not be prescribed over-the-counter medications. I, I think that choice should be just taken out of our hands. And Is that not over the, the job of a doctor, though? Not be prescribed. Is and that... we could save a lot of money, which we can put in, put back into the NHS to help with problems like but this. I'm, I'm confused, Dr Mukherjee. Is that not the job of a doctor to choose who does and doesn't get over-the-counter medication? Well, think about it. How, if, if anybody could come and say, I'm sorry, I can't afford to pay 35p or 45p for paracetamol. And it's not my job as a GP to decide. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if I, I should allow you to make that, that uh, uh, you know, uh, allowance for you. But then my yes. next patient... I can't make that allowance for you. I think it's uh, it puts a lot on us to judge on that basis. We don't have the means to check how much someone can or cannot afford. I do think, however, just, that... Um, good, sorry, just, sorry, to bring Torin, just to bring Torin issue. in there. Uh, yeah, do you, yeah, your response to that. This is yeah, I mean, this is a separate issue. This is a case of getting the actual drugs into the pharmacy to the patients there's no point arguing over whether patients should or shouldn't have prescriptions if we can't get the actual drugs in to the country. We know that because of post-Brexit red tape, some firms are not supplying drugs to the UK because it's more uh, more profitable for them to be heading abroad and into the EU where they've got access to a larger market. We are not; it's not attractive for manufacturers to be uh, to be sending drugs here compared to the EU. And the other problem that we've got is we don't manufacture drugs here um, like we used to. There isn't the there isn't the um, grassroots manufacturing. So if the government really cared about this, and it's not Rishi Sunak who's sat in the pharmacy explaining to patients why they can't get hold of their medication, it's people like me, um, then the government needs to urgently decide how they're going to tackle this. They need to get the um, approval of drugs uh, going much quicker uh, with the MHRA. MHRA is the regulator for the drugs in, to, in this country, as opposed to EMA, which is the European Medicines Agency. Nothing, and, and we haven't one... got much time. Can I, can I just jump in uh, very quickly to both of you? Why don't we just make more drugs in this damn country and make it more successful that way? Quickly, Dr Bash, your thoughts? I mean, 100 percent. And then that is where I'm saying that, you know, ultimately there are shortages, of course, because of the impact of, on all over the world. But equally, I don't think we're managing our funds very well. And those funds could be reinvested into the NHS, into the pharmaceutical industry to help these problems so that we can procure more drugs in future so that we don't come into this uh, shortfall um, going forward.
Do you think we should manufacture more in our country before we get into a debate about Brexit and whatever? That's done. That's, that ship has sailed. Do you not think it would be more successful for the business if, if we made drugs within the United Kingdom? It would be much more sensible, but also drug development is not easy. It takes years for drug development. So this is not an easy process in the first place. I should have thought about that. Interesting, though. What, before leaving the EU? Well, I'm not getting into that with you. The well, people the, voted. Yeah, no, I completely accept that the people voted. However, and as I said at the beginning of the programme, we're not going into the EU anytime soon, but we have to look forward and look at having deals or having arrangements with other countries who can help us to make sure that people are getting the medications that they so but desperately But there, there will also be the argument always, and it's, it's probably not the best argument now, given the, the recession that's in this country, that one of the reasons that people wanted to leave was to prove that this country was good enough to stand on its own two feet and do its own good thing. And I would but have thought the, the planning for those drugs, you're right, yeah. should have been years ago. It should have been, been there's many we... things. There's many things yeah. that should have been talked about years ago, like the failing National Health Service. We need to, to a yeah. different population. Listen, could talk forever. Thank you very much, Dean. We'll have to get our drugs somewhere else. We will. Junior doctor, Dr <laughs> Mukherjee there, and pharmacist Torin Govind. Thank you for joining us this morning. Still to come on Talk Today, smoking is up amongst middle-aged women. And a Sainsbury's worker is sacked after 20 years of employment for stealing plastic bags at the checkout. Can I just can I just tell you something as well to all supermarkets? Oh, let's get rid of our staff and have those self-pay things, and then you have to ask a person to come and help you because it doesn't work. Bonkers. The mail on Sundays, Anna. Mahailova and, and broadcaster Sean McDonald yeah. are here to take us through this morning's papers. This yeah. is Talk Today. It is 7.23. Good morning. Spot on. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat, go. When JK Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia, reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, miss him. <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the fourth plinth. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. So he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> ah, a trans... Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just, yeah. you for... Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist did fail her. Yeah, we're supposed it was another era. That. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth.
The home of big opinions. Oh, don't start me on that. Straight talking. There's a sort of feeling they ought to look as if they're doing something. And no nonsense. Today, if he's anyone else to stay with culture wars. Is going digital. Such as the smoke and mirrors of, of politics. Make sure you're ready. But the government has got to be more flexible. From the end of April, listen to talk on radio via DAB or your smart speaker. Or watch live on YouTube on your connected TV. Uh, welcome back. You're talk today, 7.28 Tuesday. No, it's Thursday. I can't even get the day right. Uh, we'll have the weather and just a mini-mo gym jam. But here's what else is coming up on the programme this morning. Fury for Grenfell. Families slam a business after it edits out the tower from one of its adverts. We'll be discussing that in the papers next. Uh, just before nine, Nick Ellaby will meet in the animal charity workers that are being hailed as heroes as they face their business... What is wrong with me? I'm not sure. Busiest year yet. Don't drink last night again, Carl. <laughs> And has Prince Harry finally cut his ties with the UK? At 9.20, our royal editor Sarah Houston talks through the residency update that signals a clear break from Britain. First, though, it's time for the weather. The First Lady of Weather, Nazanin Gaffer, good morning. Good morning. Uh, there will be some sunshine today. Hurrah! Where? Lucky few. When? Right now. Really? But we're in a studio. Will it be sunny when we no, leave? You, no, yes. you'll always be my sunshine. No, Naz is our sunshine and you know it. Oh, yes, yeah, look, You're I my am. storm. I'll get on with it, for God's sake. Stop being really drunk again, <laughs> fell over. Come on, crack on. Let's have a look at the weather. <laughs> Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. Good morning. Good news. Sunshine for some today, but not everywhere. For the vast majority, it's looking cloudy and wet due to this front that will be spreading its way southwards. So eventually that rain will reach southern areas, but that's not until tonight. Then after that, we start to see high pressure moving in from the west and dominating the scene in time for the weekend. So that means much lighter winds, more in the way of sunshine, not everywhere. But uh, also with the lighter winds and the sunny spells, we will see milder conditions but it will be the return back to cooler, blusterier and wetter conditions into the new week. So this morning, lots of sunshine to be had out there this morning, except across Scotland already. There is rain and cloud and brisk winds developing from the northwest and spreading southwards across Scotland through this morning and this afternoon to northern England, the north of Wales, also crossing parts of Northern Ireland. So the mid-afternoon picture across <coughs> most of Scotland is that of cloudy skies, and outbreaks of mostly light and patchy rain. Brisk winds, though, so feeling cool. A bit drier for Northern Ireland later, but northern England England and the north of Wales, later parts of the Midlands as well, will become cloudier and wetter. And the sunshine turning hazy across the south of Wales and central parts of England. But I think for many southern counties of England, for most of today, sunny, mainly dry, and the feeling mild with the lighter winds in the south, up to around 14 degrees Celsius, but feeling a lot cooler under the cloud and rain and brisk winds further north. Now, into tonight, that rain band, as I mentioned, continues its journey further southward. So southern areas seeing cloud and rain, further north, clearer skies developing. Now, the winds remain brisk everywhere overnight. As a result, temperatures won't fall away too low, so not as chilly as the last few nights, and mostly frost-free, maybe a patchy frost in some rural spots of Scotland. Tomorrow, we'll see sunnier skies overall. There will be some showers in between the sunny spells, though, mostly across central and eastern areas as high pressure starts to build in from the west. So the mid-afternoon picture for Scotland is that of some good spells of sunshine, just the odd shower or two, feeling milder with the winds becoming lighter through the day from the west. Northern Ireland, similar conditions as well, sunshine and fairly mild conditions. Most of the sunshine will be out towards Wales and the west country for tomorrow. Central and eastern areas, a bit showery at times. Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. Cheers, Naz. Well, it's time to go through the papers again with the mail on Sunday's Anna Mihailova no, and broadcaster... Anna, my Kyle lover. Right, and broadcaster Sean McDonald. Uh, Anna, you're going to kick us off uh, this incredible story about smoking among working-class women. Yeah, so it's a survey about <clears throat> who's actually smoking these days. Um, uh, of course, broadly, the story is very few people. However, of the ones who are, the trend is middle and upper class women under the age of 45 um, smoking rates and vaping rates have gone up. Oh, now, wow. it's sort of surprising, but it's also not because have you seen the cost of cigarettes? It's, yeah. in, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's beyond the pale. Um, so it's sort of not that surprising that in a costing, cost of living crisis. Vaping's only, everywhere though, isn't it? Vaping's everywhere. And obviously vaping's taken some of that smoking. Well, I, I was saying yesterday, we, we were talking about smoking, I think, this, we this bill. I'd love your opinions, both of you. I, I um, 
I fronted a government campaign five years ago because I'd given up smoking and I did it by vaping. And they were saying, oh, we made this advert. Vaping's very safe. Nowadays, a doctor told me the other day, that's an, not an even bigger problem than smoking because they're all jumping. But actually, nobody knows what's inside a vape. True. I mean, vaping originally was marketed specifically for that. And yep. I think it has helped a lot of people. However, when you look at how it's targeted at kids, the, all the many colours and Packaging. flavours, mm. and that is what part of this legislation is trying to tackle, which lots of people very much support. Sure. But vaping, I mean, we can't get rid of it. We won't get rid of no. it. People are addicted to it. Isn't it about um, making it safer? Yeah, but I mean, how do you make something safer? You don't actually know what the repercussions are going to be. It's going to take quite a long time to measure it. I personally find them to be a wee bit like a dummy for adults, like a sort of comfort toy, always kind of holding something. <laughs> do you know what? I, te I, tell so you true. I tell you what's really interesting about that comment, Shawnee. I, I, I mean, I smoked for many, many years. And you get to that point with vaping, and I was ill, and I, and I stopped doing it, and you go, um, why am I, what, what, I don't, I don't mean this, but why have I got this thing in mind? This is pointless. Habit, you it? know this from a smoke, and it, yep. and it does, and there's the habitual thing. Mm. And actually coming away from the tar and nicotine, I don't know, but I, I, it's not going away anywhere Time soon. Will tell. Do you think we should be banning people from smoking? No, I don't. And I don't think we should be banning children like they are doing, but I, I think the, mo the more effective actual ban is what they've done with raising prices. Yeah, interesting. interesting. Sure. Right, Sean, we're going to move on now to this story in The Times. Scotland's unachievable carbon goals to be eased. <laughs> yeah, it, it, well, it's being described as a significant climb down that it will create tensions between the SNP and the Scottish Greens coalition. Obviously, the Scottish Green Party, the clue is in the name. That's kind of one of their priorities is is um, environmental protection and, you know, and, and sort of clawing that back. Although they, their target was to reduce from 75% um, it's going to be something about 65% near the UK average in terms of sort of emissions and, and gases. I think what this is representative of is the Scottish government are sometimes guilty of being a wee bit, OK, the UK, UK government are doing this, we're going to kind of go one step further. Um, and then it kind of comes back to bite you, doesn't it? And it do, do you know what's really interesting? And, I, and I'm, I was no lover of Nicola Sturgeon, but I got the distinct feeling throughout the, 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 the horror of the pandemic. She was always trying to stay in front. I, I look at this as another example of how the SNP have literally imploded to the point where... And, and I'm not a fan of Hamza Youssef, but he is tainted by what came before. Climate change, climb down, the hate crime laws that, that everybody appallingly hates, the financial scandal. And I actually genuinely, I say this the whole time, I feel sorry for the thousands of people in Scotland who signed up to the SNP hoping for independence. And I feel have been massively let down, Sean. Massively let down. Yeah, God. I mean, it's a very complex one. I think that they're definitely going to lose quite a few seats um, mm. at the general election when the Scottish elections come around. I suppose that's a wee bit further away. Um, but these are things that are inescapable, even when it comes down to, to the, the record in drugs deaths and um, financial issues. They, I think they can sometimes act as if they, or they feel they have complete impunity because independence is such a priority for a lot of people. Um, and it then can, I, I don't know, it's a, it can be a bit of a smokescreen. Absolutely. Um, interesting. Yeah, the record isn't, it's far Very from perfect. Very interesting, though. I like your words on that. Anna, can we get to the Telegraph, page 12, please? Teachers offered cash to give up pensions. What? So this is a story about independent schools are apparently some of them um, offering teachers a one-off um, uh, cash payment of up to £2,000 to give up their defined benefit pensions and move to a defined contribution scheme. Now, this is all being presented as this... Uh, the unions are in, up in arms saying it's irresponsible to employers to uh, give, uh, ask people to give up pensions. They're not giving up their pensions. They're giving up something that is, well, doesn't really exist for a lot of people anymore. It's effectively, final salary pensions right. for a more standard, box standard scheme. Um, I think it's more surprising that frankly, in the private sector, defined benefit exists any, anymore. You know, I, I think... I certainly don't have one. I, don't, I think... I genuinely think that um, many people who have put... This is a genuine point here. Um, who have saved um, whatever they've saved are going to be massively disappointed. I think a lot of people will suffer a lot with pensions. I think the whole thing's a, a slight mess. I think this is an example, Sean. Don't you agree? Yeah. Um, I, th I mean, I, c I can understand as well in this current climate why people would be short-sighted as well. But, I mean, is it being short-sighted, as you say? Is it going to pay off in the long run? I think people are going to have to work till they're 75, but genuinely, I think, I think the world's changed. Sean, I want to do this with a couple in a really interesting, well, important yeah. Grenville story, Nick. Yeah, so Grenfell Tower has been edited out of a TV advert for, I believe, it is like a, a pain relief gel. Um, the company who made it, they basically said that it was intended for, for foreign and domestic use. Um, but cutting it out, there just really is no... There's no um, 
excuse for it. I think it's actually representative. You can understand why the victims of Grenfell are really upset by this. It's representative of attitudes broadly across the UK. It's forgotten about. Mm. People don't care. It's because they're poor. Um, I mean, let's just be honest. If it, see if this was a couple of, uh, like half a mile down the road, let's just say in the affluent Holland Park, yeah. I think the thing, attitudes would be a whole lot different to it. And it's just, it's, it's pretty upsetting. The, um, the government funding for a permanent memorial site seven years later has not been agreed. The Department for Leveling Up Housing and Communities, they said we will provide funding for the memorial. Where is it? Um, exactly. that, I could not agree with you more. I told and Nick the other day, I drove past with the kids Henry, yeah. about six months ago, and he was like, what that? What's that? Explain. I still get the chill when I go it's for something. And it's an worth, absolute joke. Worth explaining to our, our viewers and listeners who are further afield from London that Grenfell is actually still there, because I think a lot of people yeah, might actually yeah. presume that it had been taken down. So, when I came out of Westfield, around right about White City, and you're just confronted with it, it's very it's a dom really, domineering it, it, in the sky. And you can Anna, see it from my yeah. kitchen, and every year they, they light it up. They do, like, yeah. um, they light a column up to, up to the, the skies, and it's absolutely beautiful and really, really heart-wrenching. And actually, it, it's there to serve as a reminder yeah. to the government but and those in power that they haven't done anything. It's symbolic and it's smoke and mirrors. And like I say, if this was round the corner, you best believe there would quite rightly be memorials that would, it would yeah. constantly be, in, okay. it'd be a, marked upon. No, no, I don't disagree. Anna, thoughts on that one? Why would it have been taken I think the, I think the other scandal is that there are thousands and thousands of people around the country still living in, in cladded, cladded, yeah. cladded yeah. buildings yeah. that are as dangerous as Grenfell. And that is absolutely... Appalling. At least two friends of mine are struggling to move mm -hmm. out of their flats because they, they're, they're completely locked in now because they, they cannot as uh, sell them on. As far up as Glasgow, yeah, you've got them as well. Yeah, Outrageous. It's awful. But why, why would they? Have, have they come out with a reason why they edited it out of this? Was it's it because a... it would might trigger bad memories or anything like I, that? I or think, is it just... you know, with this one, with this type of thing, I try to look for the best in people. Same. And I think you can apply Occam's razor to this, which basically would state that... It's just you stupidity. Know, you know, the, find the, the best the, in that. The simplest explanation is probably the correct one. And I think someone's looked at it and went, oh, maybe that's a wee bit upsetting yeah. for people and they've yeah. just taken it out, but it's backfired. Um, yeah, Anna, let's has. go to the eye. I love this story. Yeah. People who do mentally stimulating jobs are 66% less likely to develop mild cognitive impairment or dementia in retirement from those... Uh, with physically demanding jobs. Both my parents had dementia before they died. I think dementia is an appalling disease. Tell yeah. me more about this story. Well, it's really interesting. I mean, um, for example, even doing stimulating jobs in your 30s can help you later on in life. So it, it, it's at any age, What really. is a stimulating job? A very good question. Thank um, you. So, <laughs> teaching. Oh. Um, definitely encourage people to become teachers. The civil service. How's that um, stimulating? Well, <laughs> it depends working which part. From home. Working from home. Yeah. No, it depends which parts of the civil service, I imagine. Um, <clears throat> there's also a very interesting feature in the Times and T2 today about uh, ways to cut your risks of dementia, and includes this little fact that the kind of reading can affect it. Um, so, reading fiction right. gives you a higher chance of not developing dementia than non fiction because stuff. fiction. Mm -hmm. Stimulate your imagination. So you'd think that reading lots of facts would be I, good. I, I've always just... I always said, didn't I, when, whenever I've done stuff in the past, I've always tried to be really honest, it is the one thing that terrifies me because both my parents have it. Yeah, depends. And I know we joke about it, oh, he's getting old and he's forgotten his name, but I think it's, I think it's a horrible, horrible disease and I think it's a disease that we really... It's extremely really cruel. And, of course, it's an cruel. umbrella term as well, isn't it? Because under yes. the, the umbrella of dementia, there are so many different types. And I yeah. firmly believe it's going to be the new cancer. Oh, yeah. You know, we, we use cancer as an umbrella it. term, but there's so many different types of it. The, but the biggest killer in the UK by quite some distance. And there's so many people that will be going undiagnosed. They get to a point of old age where you do kind of dismiss it and say, oh, he's getting a wee bit forgetful, but it's actually something that's far more sinister and, and diagnosable. Uh, just before we this finish with you both, um, like this, you we've too. got a right of reply for the Volterol advert that we were discussing earlier. Uh, a spokesperson for Halion confirmed that the editing had happened and said, we're deeply sorry for any distress that our recent Volterol adver adver advertisement may have caused. Uh, we will be taking the advert off air with immediate effect. And it's understood that the advert was intended for foreign as well as UK markets and that fed into the decision to edit out the and tower. I, and I like, uh, do you know, I like that. I like the fact they've responded. Look, we go back to anything. I'm not People sure what it's got mistake. to do with foreign viewers not yeah. wanting to see it. Um, yeah, very, very odd. But I, I suppose perhaps people are At least they've responded, eh? At least they've responded. Thank you, gang. Love that. Cheers. Um, Anna, my highlight... I can't do it.
uh, my car lover and Sean will be back in the next hour. I'm just putting this behind you, dear. I know. You know, you could possibly do that in the ad break and not what? on air. What Jeremy's doing when he leans across is put it, he's putting all of his papers in the bin instead of having the bin on his side. There we go. But not using you... the bucket that Never... you referred to earlier. Anna, can I just point out, she dominates here. She has the bin, she has the... I Honestly, if you quite see, right. quite we right. gave Charlie Rowley a cake, right? She did this link and before the link had finished, she went, where's the cake? Where's the cake? Give me the cake. <laughs> what? I'm a young mum. Right, you've been getting in touch with all your views and opinions this morning. Of course, our top story today, Conservative MP Mark Menzies. Wow. Under investigation after allegations he misused cam campaign funds in rather interesting ways. He does deny those Found claims. Found an aid at 3am in the morning and said, I need six and a half grand, I'm in a difficult position. Yes, I bet you were. It's all alleged, of course. Adrian says there is a limit to clearing the mess, but given what the Tories have dished out for years and years, it will be really hard for them to get over their corrupt image. Gavin says the Tories don't need another sleaze scandal to further Sunak's position as Prime Minister. Reason? It's already rock bottom. Oliver, I agree with this. I think we've all reached a stage where we don't f even feel anger towards our politicians anymore. The only thing that we are sure about is that the Tories are not going to make it to number 10. And Don from Chelmsford has texted us his views. He said that after the MP's recent expenses scandal, we thought that the swamp had been drained. It clearly hasn't. It's absolutely true. Talk today at talk.tv, text to 8722. We want to hear from you. What do you make of that? Uh, we'll talk many, many things in the next... Well, how long have we many, got Many, many things. I love An that you said that. three quarters. Many, many things. Well, we're going to be moving on now because an we? animal... We're moving on now. We're moving on. An animal rescue centre in ah. East Sussex <laughs> has recorded its busiest ever year, seeing an 18% increase in the number of casualties that it dealt with. Uh, talk today's intrepid correspondent, Nicholas Ellaby, Jr., is live from the rescue centre for this morning. Nick, seriously, 18%. Uh, what, t tell me, what, why is there a surge in animal casualties, my friend? It's nodding again. Good morning, Jeremy. Good morning, Nicola. I'm here in, in the casualty room, actually, at the East Sussex Wildlife Rescue and Ambulance Service. We have to be a little bit quiet not to wake all these baby animals up. There's a baby rabbit in here. We're not going to be able to show you him, but we will show you one of these fox cubs. So there are two fox cubs. One's asleep in here, another one in here. And then just in one of these at the top, there's actually a dormouse. So there's so many different animals here being rescued by this man and his team. This is Trevor Weeks, the founder. Trevor, why have you seen such a big rise in animal casualty and rescue callouts? Um, I think it's been it's, it's a combination that we're getting better known. Um, there are various other organisations that are closing down or struggling with capacity. Um, we're also building more on our green spaces and, and especially in this area. Um, and the, there's just becoming more and more of a conflict between humans, human activity and the wildlife that is trying to survive in our county. All right, Trevor, we're going to get into the funding in this place in a minute as well, because they're struggling a little bit with the funding costs going up across the board but first of all let's have a look at this baby fox trevor's just going to show you one of their rescues so this little baby fox doesn't have a name yet so trevor tell me where you where you got this guy um, why was he called it? This little chap um, comes from Molescombe in Brighton. He's having a big um, wee all over you. all over which is typical. Um, and he's, um, he's unfortunately, he's, uh, he was disturbed um, where his, his mum was and everything was all disturbed. Mum's gone off and uh, basically abandoned him um, and just not come back for him. We tried to reunite him, but unfortunately it just wasn't possible. Um, so, um, yeah, so we've just cleaned him out and we're um, going to rear him, look after him and hopefully get him back to the wild eventually. OK, such a little cutie. All right, so, look, Trevor has, has running, he's basically running a small team here and he's got 170 volunteers. They're going to come in and feed the animals, so in about an hour's time we should be able to show you a bit of that process. But this sector is really struggling for donations at the moment, wildlife rescue in particular. Why is that, Trevor? I think it's because, you know, wildlife rescue is, I think, generally the bottom of the barrel when it comes around to funding. Um, you know, a, a lot of people don't see us as benefiting the community. But as far as I'm concerned, our wildlife is part of the community. You know, we've heard a lot about how our nature and our countryside is good for our mental health. But what is the point in having countryside if our animals aren't there or are roaming around sick and injured all the time? And most of the animals we get coming in here, 90% of them are as a re direct result of human interaction, you know, injury, persecution or abuse. Mm. And Trevor's got an ambulance service as well. You can call out and rescue animals if you, if you see them in, in the wild. But tell me about those costs. The costs going up across the board, inflation's high still. What are the costs that are prohibitive for you? 
Well, at the moment, it's, it's just the inflation of everything, all the prices going up right the way across the board and making it very difficult for us to continue. So, you know, just be it, um, you know, increase in national living wage, um, you know, fuel, um, energy, vehicle costs, food costs, you know, even just down to the administration costs, yeah. everything across the board is going up and up and up every single year. And it's a struggle. Yeah, like we keep hearing, everybody's struggling. So, look, we're going to come back to you in an hour introduce you to some more animals and also in the studio if you want to think of a name for this little guy he doesn't have a name yet so maybe we can name him on the show this morning guys Nick Ellaby in East Sussex please bring that little fox cub back no you. I don't want it anywhere near me it's just peed all over that bloke absolutely adorable well we'll be catching up with Nick uh, in the next hour for feeding time oh calm down woman well, for goodness sake still to come on the show something a bit more for Jeremy's taste yeah. Jake Robson is in let's with talk sport. sport morning Jake yeah morning let's do it that's right it was a sad night for the English clubs in the Champions League Manchester City's dream of a treble were dashed after they lost out on penalties to Real Madrid and Arsenal. They also made a disappointing exit from the competition after they were beaten by Bayern Munich. But it's not all doom and gloom. British ace, tennis ace, Emma Raducanu is back on form after her third win in a week. Could she be set to bag another trophy? I'll have all that and lots more. This is Talk Today. Good morning. Very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't Talk. going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get. This. <laughs> but 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 I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <miss him. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know it's I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> that, that oh, a, a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, what did fail her. Yeah, we're absolutely. supposed to have moved on from that. Era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV, it's the only place where you get the truth. Welcome back to you Talk Today. It is six. Oh, sorry. No, it's not even six. It's 7.51. My apologies. <clears throat> now, it was a disappointing night for Man City and Arsenal as both teams crashed out of the Champions League. To tell us more, sports broadcaster Jake Robson is here. And Jake and I don't like Arsenal. I don't want to start with Man City. I want to start with the fact that Arsenal's 
Uh, every Tottenham fan in the land was delighted last night, weren't they? They were. We were. Piers Morgan is seething, it. man. Uh, good, good. Uh, no sympathy at all. Uh, obviously, the way it turned out was something that they weren't expecting after no. last week because they actually, they actually did OK in the first leg. But last night, <laughs> my goodness, they... I would say they were a bit toothless. They were timid. timid. They didn't manage to get their game going at all. This kind of game that we've seen them play in the Premier League was just deserted them last night. They... And do you know what I thought of when I saw the result? And I was out last night, so I haven't seen the match. But do you know what I thought? I thought to myself, Thomas Tuchel is, is, is leaving Bayern Munich at mm. the end of the season. It's been a real failure. He hasn't won the German League. Harry Kane went there to try and win a trophy. That sort of defensive on-the-break performance... I wouldn't bet against. I would. I, I wouldn't bet against them beating Real Madrid and making it to the final. And actually, winning that, and he he did it at Chelsea, didn't he? Straight he, away. He, it was a perfect away performance in the Champions League. Yeah, by I mean, it was it was it was textbook really. Yeah. And actually, them against Real Madrid is going to be fascinating to see mm. who comes out on top. But yeah, Arsenal. I mean, the, the the way that they've been playing in the Premier League has they've been, they've taken the Premier League by storm this season. They've had, had the best defense. Chokers. No yeah, and and in the in the biggest the biggest games this season so far. No, I I, I don't think it's an exaggeration. Nicola, in the biggest games they've had in the last couple of weeks, they haven't they haven't done the business. Man City, though, this was shocking. We'll move on from Arsenal. They were knocked out on uh, on penalties, uh, of course, um, and 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 the the, the treble uh, dreams are in tatters this morning, my friend. Well, they're they're disintegrated, and actually, without putting too fine a point in it, I think Manchester City's loss was worse because not only were they playing at home, they managed to draw after 90 minutes. Uh, against the Real Madrid side that everybody fancied them to win. They never lose at home. And, and technically, they drew across the yeah. 120 minutes. The two penalties that they missed were absolutely disgraceful. I don't yeah. know if you've seen them. If you haven't, no. go and check them out. The first one was Bernardo Silva. He, he, was their, he took their second penalty. He's kicked it straight at the goalkeeper, down the goalkeeper's mm. throat. Uh, I mean, awful. And he's one of their best players. Kovacic, Mateo Kovacic then stepped up, former Real Madrid player. Yeah. His was saved, penalty three. And all of a sudden... And, and, and all after Real Madrid had missed their first penalty, yeah. Luka Modric missed his. So it was advantage Manchester City. They threw it away. Two penalties missed. I mean, you just don't expect... And the, and the knock-on effect is... Um, this one, but, but less teams from England can qualify for the Champions League. Now, um, Nicola's favourite tennis player... Yes. And Raducanu. Uh, yes. When's he going to get injured next? Why have you got to be so mean? Oh. Deary me. I, I, is it like a broadcaster thing? Men in a middle-aged no. broadcaster have say to this, have no, a go no, no, at no, little I say the same Emma about Raducanu. Andy Murray. Give up because she passed it. Emma Raducanu was Isn't the greatest she, thing she's ever. She's 21 years old. She's got real issues with fitness, but maybe she's turned the corner. She won a match yesterday. She did win a match. She finally won a match. Um, I mean, listen, at the end of the day, she gave not just tennis fans... Sports fans, mm -hmm. one of the most amazing stories and matches, didn't she, back in yes, she did. September 2021 when she won the US Open? It, it, come on, it was absolutely fantastic. Extraordinary performance. The, the, of course, the problem with this is she's barely won a thing since, and it does then leave her open to question as to, well, A, was she actually any good? Is she actually any good? Can she then repeat this kind mm. of this form or, or, or what we saw there? And she's had a lot of outside influences. Lots of Be different coaches. Lots, lots of different of coaches, deals. lots of sponsorship deals. Mm. And this is why people start to question a lot of things. Motives, uh, quality, this kind of thing. But, you know, uh, listen, I think it would be a fantastic story if she could start winning again. And, and you know, with Wimbledon not that long round the corner, mm. she'll, be, uh, she'll be a hot ticket come this summer if she starts picking up some form. Good for her. She's only 21. What exactly. were you doing when you were 21? Um, do we want to know? Probably <laughs> married with my first child, I can imagine. <laughs> well, fair enough. Yeah, fair right. Enough. Um, <clears throat> let's move on now, Jake, to a story about the Olympics. There will be rings of steel at the opening ceremony uh, amid fears that there might be terror threats. Yeah, I mean, Paris, not the safest city as far as certainly terrorism threats goes. And just fans in general. You may mm. remember when Liverpool played the Champions League final uh, there a couple of years ago, a lot of their fans got oh. uh, attacked. Um, by uh, by people in the by locals in the area, sure. the police also uh, were involved there. It was a very unseemly atmosphere, and we're actually going to have for the first time the Olympic ceremony is not going to be in the stadium because you'll remember from yes. years gone by, London 2012, how amazing it was in the stadium. But they've actually decided to do it on the river. Uh, Jake, thank you for. Uh, you won't believe what happened. The reason that went a bit strange there. What Jake was doing, the entire studio went red. I thought I'd suddenly been transported to Amsterdam. <laughs> uh, Jake, thank you very much, Steve. Almost got away with it.
Honestly, it it's true, isn't it? Jeremy Carl letting the audience know. No, you let them know. You've got to be honest with the audience. That's the problem. Thank you, well, Jake. Thank you so much, Jake, for joining Pesky. us this morning. Still to come, we'll be turning, returning to our top story as a Tory MP is accused of misusing £14,000 of campaign funds, including to pay bad people. Extraordinary. This is Talk Today. Do not go anywhere. More on that incredible story coming up. It's almost uh, 8 o'clock. We'll come back in three. <laughs> Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And you're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Isn't that? Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <miss him. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know what's I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. That's quite a small statue then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just, 40 yeah. minutes, 40. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, 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 did fail her. Yeah, we're supposed to have moved on from that. Era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. On TV, on radio, and on your smartphone, this is Talk TV. This is Talk Today with Jeremy Kyle and Nicola Thorpe. A very good morning to you. Just gone 8 o'clock on Thursday the 18th of April. You have talked today on TV, radio, online and your smart speaker. Here are your top stories this morning. This is extraordinary. Kidnap threats and misuse of thousands of pounds of campaign funds. The unbelievable allegations against Tory MP Mark Menzies now under investigation. Preparing for retaliation, Netanyahu rejects the UK's calls for restraint with Iran and tells Lord Cameron Israel makes its own decisions. And foreign aid fury, this will rally up, will ask if it's time to stop sending cash to some of the world's richest countries. And sunshine today, but only for some. The vast majority is looking rather cloudy and wet. I have the full details in the forecast a little later. Cheers, Naz. Well, now it's time for your headlines with Emily. Thank you, Nicola. Good morning. A Conservative MP has been suspended from the party after allegations in The Times that he misused campaign funds. 
£14,000 from donors is said to have been transferred to Mark Menzies' bank accounts. The MP for File in Lancashire disputes the claims which are being investigated by his party. Well, former Conservative adviser Charlie Rowley is told talk today it's another headache for Rishi Sunak. The scandal, another Conservative MP that mm. adds to the, the, uh, the, the sleaze of the scandal of... Of, of the party, which is no good for Rishi Sunak. If you want to be uh, going to the country to say, look, you know, um, uh, me and my team uh, of Tory MPs uh, uh, are the best people to, to continue to lead the country. A UK-founded website used to scam tens of thousands of victims has been taken down after a global police operation. LabHost let criminals steal people's information, including almost half a million card numbers. It bombarded people with messages, which included fake links to make payments online. The Prime Minister's plan to send some asylum seekers to Rwanda has been hit by delays for the fourth time after the House of Lords insisted on changes again. It means the bill to send migrants to the East African country won't become law until at least next week. Peers want to see an exemption for those who work for the government or the military abroad. The Scottish government is expected to confirm it's ditching its flagship climate change policy. Ministers have been told the target of cutting greenhouse gas emissions by 75% by the end of this decade is unachievable after missing eight of the last 12 annual targets. A statement from Holyrood is expected this afternoon. And the Prince of Wales is due to return to official public duties later for the first time since Princess Catherine revealed her cancer diagnosis. William will visit a surplus food charity in Surrey and a youth centre in West London. He spent the last three and a half weeks with his family after they asked for space and privacy. You're up to date with the headlines. I'll have more in an hour's time. Thanks, Em. As ever, brilliant. Before we get on to that Conservative MP and those allegations, um, it did just if you are just tuning in or waking up, so this is Mark Menzies, um, who allegedly... Uh, phoned a 78-year-old constituency aide at 3 o'clock in the morning and allegedly said, I find myself in a bit of a difficult position. Um, I need £6,500. Now, make of that what you will. I mean, he could basically... I don't know, maybe he wanted to buy a lottery scratch card. It's not for me to assume that there was anything untoward happening. Happened but to all of us. Yet... I mean, I, do I phone you at 3 o'clock in the morning and said I need six and, six and a half? And a half grand. No. You'd but... have been up, though, wouldn't you? Because your driver would have arrived two hours early. Anyway, <laughs> cut to the chase. I mean, I mean it is another... I appalling example, and this isn't about Tory or Labour or whatever, this is another appalling example, in my humble opinion, of how low-grade our MPs are, and I think we deserve more. I've been saying it all morning. Love your scandal opinions on this. Scandal after scandal after scandal, It's isn't true. It? Linda, no matter how hard I try to believe that not all MPs are the same, but these politicians never fail to prove me wrong. I am sick and tired of their greed bringing shame to their respectful positions Totally unacceptable. I get it. And this is what we talk about so often on the show is apathy towards all MPs. But then there are people, you know, take Nadia Whitton, for example, who takes, um, I think, it's, is it the average salary she takes or she takes only a certain amount and gives the rest uh, away? And you, so think that, of you, know, you think of good constituency good. MPs. Look at the, the MPs who lost their lives. Joe Cox. Think of David Amos in yeah. South End. Honestly, it's an utter disgrace. It Samuel really says, I thought we were nearly at the bottom of the, the global corporation index. A but it looks global like, corruption index. Thank you very much. But it looks like we will soon rank at the top, thanks to the Tories. Michael Brayson emailed us his views uh, on Talk Today at Talk.tv. He says these MPs are greedy and they don't care. It clearly explains why the country is in a state. Final one for now, Sebastian. Another day, another MP in the headlines for the wrong reasons. We know the investigation to their corruption or misconduct will take us nowhere. Not a single politician has been held accountable for abusing their power and money. The bar has indeed been set so low for the next generation of government. What a shame, British politics. I, th I think that's absolutely right, isn't it? Absolutely. Talk today at talk.tv, text to 8722. Do please start your message with the word talk. Corporal Thorpe's on next. Well, as we've been discussing, a Conservative MP has lost the party whip over an investigation into claims that he misused £14,000 of campaign funds, which he denies. He does deny it. Mark Menzies allegedly made a late-night call, as I said, to, to a 78-year-old aide saying, can I have £6,500? Uh, I need to secure my release. I've been locked up by what apparently is being described as bad people. <laughs> that he met on an online dating website. That's one of the allegations reported this morning in the Times newspaper, my friends. Well, to make sense of it all, or not, as the case may be. Not is, bad uh, people, by the way, that we met on any website. These no, are good people. very good people yes. we know. Uh, political editor at Tortoise Media, Kat Nealon, and former Conservative advisor, James Price.
Good morning, both. Yet another scandal faced by the Tories. Kat, we'll start with you. Yeah, and I think big questions uh, to answer here, not just for Mark Menzies himself, but also for the handling of it from the party. The fact that they apparently knew about this three months ago and mm -hmm. sat on it um, and have only uh, uh, taken away the whip as a result of this uh, Times article. I think there are big questions there about the handling of the matter by the party. What I found fascinating, James, before we get into a debate about just, I think, what the public now think of MPs, is that this gentleman, this wasn't the first scandal, in 2014, in front of the Sunday Mirror from that year, he was caught up in a drugs and rent boy scandal. I mean, you would, and I'm not, I don't want it to be about specific political parties. It's a, it's a shambles, man, isn't it? What are, what are, what are people who are struggling supposed to think about our politicians now? Yeah, I, I think it's, it's, uh, it's terrible. I think we're almost at a point where it's sort of a pathology. And I think that looking past every individual scandal, I do think perhaps we need to start looking at some of the structural reasons yeah. to why this may be the case. Mm -hmm. So you have people who are a long way from home, often by, by nature of, of the fact that their constituencies can be a long way from London. Yeah. They're going to be in London for a few days, uh, they're working in their departments if they're ministers or voting and all these sorts of things. They're inside Parliament until quite late when they're voting. There's not a lot to do. They've got to be on site because the whip says they've got to be there to vote when, when divisions are called and things like that. And there's lots of booze and stuff around and these are clearly not good circumstances not good situations for too many people okay it's so amazing it, how we, we end up having and i, I don't disagree with like anything an excuse, exactly i, I don't oh, yeah. disagree oh. with anything you're saying it is a reason if you do an all-night work in it if it, it's incredible oh, how we have if you're in a factory in blackpool you do 12 it's, hours i'm sorry to say that I'm not having a go at you, no, but no, that's pathetic and weak. It's Maybe we expect too much from our politicians. Incredible that we have seemingly so much empathy and sympathy and we can come up with these reasons and excuses mm. for MPs. But perhaps the same wouldn't be said for members of the public, as Jeremy I, I, quite I, rightly I, is saying. I, maybe we don't pay our MPs. Maybe that's the debate. But I honestly think we have a right to say... Do you think if we the paid them more that this would stop happening? I don't think I, so. I think there's, I a, there's know, a really right, vicious yeah. cycle that happens here in that you get a lot of media scrutiny, which is important. Sometimes the scrutiny isn't necessarily the best. It's, you know, oh, what is this person wearing? When there was that Lexit thing about Theresa May and Nicola Sturge and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Obviously, most media scrutiny is really important and healthy for our democracy. Yeah. But people don't like that. So I think, well, in return for that, I want to have lots of power and I want to have, you know, to be able to affect change. Well, they can't get that because the way the civil Read service the job spec is kind of... With it, right? Well, but the way the civil Needed service scrutiny. is these days, it's very hard to actually get things done. And then you've got the fact that you're being paid a lot less than perhaps a lot of people in the city, uh, running big businesses and those kinds of things. So people of real quality uh, don't bother going into it and you're left with, dare I say, some of the dregs? Where does it end, Kat? Because it's... Sorry, Nick, go on. I was going to say it end. This should have been flagged a lot earlier, mm. though, shouldn't it? It's not just about one MP's decision to spend time in the company of whoever, yeah. but it's about the Bad fact that £14,000 <laughs> came from campaign funds. Surely that should have been flagged much sooner. Yeah, and there does seem to be, again, something specific happening here where perhaps there was a sort of local donors kind of giving a nod and a wink and saying, look, that's OK, we understand you've got sort of issues here. But once it's kind of been flagged up to the sort of central office, I think that's when there should have been some more involvement. Mm. And actually, to the point about... Why does this keep happening to our MPs? I, I do take James's point. I think it is an incredibly isolated uh, experience that many of us will never really f fully understand what it's like to be an MP, let alone a minister. Um, there needs to be better support within all of the parties um, to deal with things like mental health issues, uh, drug and alcohol addiction. Can I? Can I? I don't want. To, I don't want to have an argument or anything. But 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 why is it that when a male MP, and I'm saying male just because he is a male, gets caught with a rent boy, right? Allegedly, not this one, others. That he goes, I've got mental health issues. He didn't have, he didn't have damn mental health issues when he went to visit the the, the, the young well, man, necessarily... did he? He got it after he got caught with his trousers down. That's what annoys me. I'm not even necessarily saying that's the case here, but I do think that sometimes MPs get themselves involved in situations uh. that they're not able to extricate themselves from, and they well, they, they do that. need better support. And there is, you know, there has been. Obviously, you have uh, the the whips role is sometimes to sort of discipline them and kind of be the sort of uh, a sort of scary bogeyman mm. in the corner kind of collecting the information that they can then use against you but there's also a kind of ecumenical kind of uh, sort of looking after a component do, do to that think role we sure. expect too much of our politicians then I think we don't really support them and train them. You know, MPs come in, again, with the, the sort of honey trap, um, yeah. William Rag scandal from the other week, you know, that there is a kind of lack of explanation, lack of training there yeah. about okay. how to respond to phishing and, and you know, kind of uh, blackmail, which again seems to be the case here. 
um, which, you know, on the face of it, it should be the sort of thing that people could quite easily rebut. But actually, once you kind of get yourself involved in a situation, then it becomes much more difficult for you to get out it's of really, it. I understand really that, but angle. I think for, for so many people listening and watching, listening to and watching this, will be going, I don't need training. To know so right. that meeting up with somebody Thank you. and exchanging Taking whatever has been. Taking cocaine meeting rent boys. Do you need training in that? Or <laughs> I don't, don't do it. I don't think you. I don't think you do. And I think if people do indulge in that in their private lives and their private citizens, that's one thing. But to do it as a serving MP is something else entirely, because you're supposed to be held to certain levels of scrutiny. And and also more than anything, of course you're going to get caught. Right. It, it is the shocking poor judgment that comes. Mm. And then, you know, the morning after where the, the, the hangover comes along and you're dealing with all these things, you then go, ah, oh, do you know what? I actually think that my judgment is good enough that I am able to legislate on artificial intelligence. Despite I'm able to do all these the other things. And I've got mental right. health issues. I totally, take, one are you I totally right. take Kat's point, though, because uh, there has to be a, a moment or somebody that MPs can go to mm. if they have, say, indulged in something, yeah. whatever it might be, and then they're being blackmailed or they're being threatened in any which way. I like what you said way. about new ones coming in and not knowing. I yeah. get that, I get that. They need to have a point of contact where they can, somebody that they can go to to say, and I'm sure it probably exists, but just probably isn't being utilised. They say, I'm in this situation, we've been talking Scroll all week, lawyer. haven't we, about how honesty should be the best policy, and they should be able to well, come, so, be upfront about it. But they're not incentivised, to be honest, because yes. they know that it's going to then be kind of, you know, scored over but by then, all But what Nick's right yeah. as well, it will come out. So the Rainer thing, I've been banging this drum a week for a reason. I, I think she's a breath of fresh air, I think, and, and I genuinely mean that, and she's a working-class woman. But the truth is, you silly, silly ladies, it's, it's not going away. Do I believe she's guilty or innocent? I don't know. But Angela Rayner needs to release that information and slay this dragon, because it's going to go on and on and on. And people will walk around, whatever your political persuasion, and go, she's obviously got something to hide, mate, because she could have laid it out a long time ago, Jay, right? Yeah, I think that's fair enough. I, I, when I was um, uh, in the Conservative Party central office, and my old boss, Adim Zahawi, was the chairman, and we were trying to work on some of these, these issues. And part of the problem that you, you've got is, we talked about the whips, this very arcane system that you've got members of parliament who are kind of quasi-ministers for both sides, actually, the and they go around and they're doing this sort of disciplining. And so it's, you know, you're going to vote in the way that the prime minister wants you to vote, and if you don't, we're going to get you in trouble. It's a very old-school way of doing it, right? Well, and this is the thing. It used to be back in the day, they would collect little bits of blackmail and dirt on you and say, right, if, you're, if you don't vote the way that we want you to vote, this stuff's going to come out. And that obviously doesn't really fit with the modern world anymore. And then you've got the very, very happens. modern... Does uh, it still happen? It still happens. Yeah. And you've got the very modern HR kind of system, right? Right? That also sits alongside with the modern parties, so they have disciplinary processes for when a, you know, a local councillor tweets something silly. And they, this is where the two different things, how do they come along? Where are the, the lawyers involved in this? I want things? to be an MP. Where this is, is the morality? And, and that's the really it's difficult certainly. interplay, and that's why stuff keeps falling through the cracks. Well, speaking of kind of tit for tat, there mm. was a few moments, I think it's fair to say, in Prime Minister's questions yesterday. It was a where... bitch fest, wasn't it, to be honest? <laughs> well, quite honestly, it was, Jeremy. Do you know what? You took the words right out of my mouth. Oh, sorry. Let's have a look at the clip. It was. Mr. Speaker, all I'd say is he uh, ought to spend a bit less time reading that book and a bit and a bit more and a bit more time reading the deputy leader's tax advice. We've got a billionaire prime minister yeah. and a billionaire prime minister, both of, both of whose families have used schemes to avoid millions of pounds of tax, smearing a working class woman. Can I jump in and say, and I said this to Hugo Rifkin, who said, you know, the Angela Rayner thing's only about 1,500 quid. I don't think it's about... I'm sorry, I don't care about the billionaire or the working-class woman. What I care about is I am absolutely within my right as a voter to expect the people that represent me in Parliament should have a degree of respectability, honesty and truth wherever they come from, whatever they're worth. Surely that should be a cornerstone of, of public service, shouldn't it? Well, and Labour has actually made this uh, their, one of their principles, right? Improving standards in public life yeah. has been one of their big kind of campaigning things. Oh, and dear. that is partly why she has now had to raise the stakes and say she will resign if she's found to have committed an offence. What do you think James, about the truth? Is Just... there not an argument, though, to say oh. that? Let me mm. no, you know, at least put it out. She, this was before she was an MP. She was a working-class woman, as you said. And the difference between the tax advice that a working-class woman on a certain amount of money would get and the tax advice that a billionaire would get, that is where the vast difference is. I'm not saying anything is right or wrong. You break a rule, you break a rule, you suffer the consequences. Yeah. But there are accountants and very crafty people that billionaires can afford to employ that get them around certain tax rules that perhaps people on a regular salary just wouldn't be aware of. 
I, I certainly think with my kind of economist hat on that we should definitely simplify the tax code and, you know, the Laffer curve will bring us in more money. We don't need to go into all of that. But I, I, I think that this idea that, oh, she's a working class woman, so she couldn't possibly know how to abide by the rules. I just think that's so insulting that's to so insulting many well, millions yeah. of people, right? Yeah, right. Like, you know, I'm, I might sound a bit plummy. My folks didn't go to university. Dad was a builder. They worked them hard, as hard as they possibly could. They've yeah. never done these things. They read the fine print as hard as they can, like millions of people. I think it's such a terribly offensive uh, way to okay, say I'm with She you on couldn't that. know any better. Why doesn't she? Uh, why doesn't she then, guys? If she's innocent, that's a, fair, a really fair point. She disrespects all those working class people who would read, read the small print. But what, if she's innocent, right? And I say she's a breath of fresh air. Why doesn't she just come out with the information? Because as every hour passes, people are going to doubt her, aren't they? Yeah, and the same can be asked of Keir Starmer, as Rishi Sunak was saying yesterday. Why hasn't he read the, yep. the, le the legal advice, the tax advice that she's been given? It's plausible deniability. It's so that, you know, if push comes to shove and she does have to fall on her sword, he can still say, well, I didn't know I trusted her. Um, and I'm Maybe sad to see her go. Him. Yeah, I, I think that's probably right. I mean, they, don't forget that the way that the, the Labour leader is elected by members and a mix with, with trade unions getting votes as well, or some peculiar sort of socialist system, but so is the deputy leader as well. And so they're clearly not uh, exactly bosom buddies with each other. But very interesting. interesting. And that will actually open up another can of worms for him as well, because if she does have to go, well, that will be put triumphs. to the May members. Yes. And therefore, even if, even if it ends up being someone who is broadly of the same worldview as Keir Starmer, there will probably be a bit of... Dirty linen being I wonder if aired. Jeremy Corbyn would be able to stand. It's been thrown no, out no. over the next thing, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, thank you so much to thank Kat Leland from Tortoise and former Conservative advisor James Price. Well, let's take a look, a uh, final look now at some of this morning's front pages, as well as the allegations into Mark Menzies' campaign fund abuse. The Times also features a blow for Rishi Sunak after hopes of significant interest rate cuts are dashed, with inflation falling slower than expected. He's not having a great day. The Mail published an exclusive poll. This is this is really I think this is really interesting. Find, finding almost half of people don't want a Starmer government. Ha, almost half. That is despite the fact the Tories are trailing their rivals, and this to me is even more shocking by this. They're trailing trailing their rivals on every major thing that matters to you, ladies and gentlemen. Defense tax and migration. That's where we're at. And American idol Harry. The sons say that Prince Harry has cut all ties with Britain as he officially Good. registers as an American resident. Right, 18 minutes past eight, Thursday morning. We're live across the UK. You were talk today. Now, Israel makes its own decisions. That's the message from Benjamin Netanyahu to the UK Foreign Secretary Lord David Cameron on his visit yesterday to Jerusalem. Well, Lord Cameron is one of many Western diplomats due to visit Israel to warn it from sparking a major conflict with Iran. Uh, joining us on this now is editor of Business News Europe, Ben Aris. Ben, a very good morning to you. Um, it's interesting. Um, Netanyahu thanked the Allies for their deeds and words, but claimed that Israel will respond in a way that Israel wants to. I get that. I also get the firm sitting on the fence here. I also get the feeling that people over here are saying, our £73 million jets, mate, helped you. Don't you think you should be listening to us? Thoughts? Indeed. The problem here is that uh, the Israeli line has hardened. If you remember um, on the Sunday after the attacks the weekend, that the Israeli cabinet had a meeting and there there was a big argument between the moderates who don't want to start a regional war because that's in nobody's interest, including Israel, and the hawks um, who absolutely want to hit back. And it came, it was inconclusive, but uh, the ground has shifted in the last four days. Um, we're, we're now expecting the a strike back. This meeting with Cameron between, with him and Netanyahu, um, that he made it clear that um, the Israelis are going to strike. Um, although there's a lot of diplomacy going on at the moment and Cameron was also shifted his ground. He was relatively uh, critical of Israel um, with regards to the bombing in Gaza and the uh, humanitarian crisis that's going on there. However, Cameron was saying like, well, if you're going to do it, then he was using words like um, smart response, restrain, um, that they're trying to avoid this escalating. And he's suggesting that uh, yeah, that's done. Uh, believes it's a, it's a done deal, that it will happen. Um, and again, we had uh, the Iranian attacks happen at the end of uh, Ramadan, the um, Aid al Fatir festival. Um, and now the reports coming out of Israel saying that they're looking at the end of Passover, which is on April uh, 30th. What's that? That's a Tuesday or two weeks. Um, and they're expecting a strike then. And what they're trying to do is get the um, Israelis, if they are going to go ahead, to restrain themselves. But the big question is what target they'll choose. Will they hit something like um, Tehran and urban? 
um, city, or they do like the Iranians did, which was to hit an airbase in the middle of the desert, which didn't do any damage and, and hardly hurt anybody. Yeah, Ben, I'm just intrigued to know, actually, in what way Israel could retaliate, as they failed to do, in a way that wouldn't escalate matters or deem a response worthy from, from Iran. What could you imagine that they could possibly do? Well, that's the key question. I mean, in the, uh, in the Ukraine-Russia conflict, um, the US and, and the UK have a lot of influence over Zelensky, and they can basically tell him what he can and can't do. However, in Israeli's case, I mean, it's quite clear that the US has no control over what uh, Netanyahu does. I mean, the, the Americans are particularly terrified of starting a regional war because one of the dynamics here um, is that Iran is now exporting six-year highs of oil and the Americans have turned a blind eye to the sanctions because of the, the sanctions on Russia and the effects on the oil market production. And that taking the Iranian oil off the market will send prices of oil skyrocketing. I mean, people are talking about 200, 250 bucks and then that will send the price of the pumps up to over five dollars uh, ahead of the U.S. election, and that will seriously de derail Biden's attempt to uh, to get reelected. So this is one of the reasons why the U.S. is so keen to avoid a war. But it seems now that um, the rhetoric, as I say, in the last four days has shifted, and that they're resigned to the fact that Israel will strike. And that's the big question: What will they hit? I mean, you know, in Telling News, we we maintain a, a bureau in in, uh, in Tehran, and our guys will send their families to the countryside. So, on the on the ground in Tehran, they're expecting a massive hit, and they're expecting Tehran to be hit, or at least it's a possibility. But if they, if Netanyahu takes Cameron's advice and does a restraint tag, then they'll hit some military targets. Um, but the Israelis have a track record of going after high value targets, particularly people, generals and what have you. And that would suggest that they'll hit some Ministry of Defense building in, in, in Tehran, uh, Tel Aviv or somewhere like that, um, sorry, in Tehran. And um, then that will escalate. The, the Iranians will be obliged to hit back. Um, they told the FT that, you know, we're crazier than you are. And although the 300 drones that we, they sent into Israel seems like a lot, um, they're capable of like tenfold uh, the size of attack. Plus, they could activate Hezbollah and attacking out of, of uh, Lebanon, and then and then all bets are off. And then we're into a regional war, um, which will spin out of control very fast. I think it's very interesting, Ben. Though, sorry, I think my microphone wasn't working. I was trying to jump in on there. I think your word obliged was quite interesting because we've watched this escalate, and tit for tat is the fear. You do this, I'll do that. I do think the one thing that needs to be said, several things that need to be said, of course, Iran, you talked about sanctions. They don't care. Sanctions aren't going to work. They're just too busy with Russia and China. That's the, that's the triple axis we need to be talking about. And their proxies, the Houthis and Hezbollah and Hamas, will continue yeah. to do it. I think that the... Um, I think it's a, an incredibly worrying and difficult time. I don't think it's about... It's like I keep saying about the Israeli-Hamas war. Everybody pontificates and runs around the world going, let's have a ceasefire. I get the humanitarian disaster. It's dreadful. Hamas and Benjamin Netanyahu don't want a ceasefire right now. I don't know about the mullahs in Iran, but I suspect that a lot of people have a lot of motives and the world will watch on. I'm not quite sure how effective David Cameron's words are, but there you go. Netanyahu will do what he's going to do, I guess, and the Hamas will do what they're going to do and Iran will do what they're going to do. And we all have to hope and pray that it doesn't end up in any bad way, I suppose, my friend. I mean, the Iranians made it very clear uh, on the day after the attack, the defense minister came out and declared like mission accomplished. The, the attack was a big success. But then he went on to make it crystal clear that Tehran had stopped, that they won't be any more attacks. And they were hoping that the tit for tat thing, that they got revenge for the Israeli bombing of their consulate in Damascus Iranians and that then, they had friend? to respond and they did respond. Would you believe the Iranians? Uh, yes, I, I think, I mean, as I say, no one wants a regional war, um, particularly not uh, Iran, but uh, the Iranians have made it clear that, you know, if there is a counter strike by the Israelis to the, uh, yeah. the, the attack at the weekend, then they will also hit back. And All right, listen, Ben, there, sorry, like pal, we're going to have to we're going to have to leave it there. But very, very grateful for you coming on. Ben Aris from Business News Europe. Well, who so trusts Iran not to fight back. I'm, I don't trust any not, of them. He's not the first guest that no. has said that. No, he's not. I just I, I actually genuinely, Nick, mm. 
I don't trust any of them. I think it's a real tinderbox. It's a very, very worrying time for it a lot of people. It is indeed. Let's just hope the UK does everything it can to stop that from happening. Well, still to come on Talk Today, almost half of people would pay up for better <clears throat> NHS services. And this is great. You've got these, haven't you? And sales of cowboy boots have soared thanks to Beyonce. I actually don't, but maybe I should invest. Well, the Mail on Sunday is Anna Mihailova and broadcaster Sean McDonald take us through this morning's papers next. Do stay with us. It is 8.25. Good morning. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, missing. <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know what's, I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just, 40 yeah. minutes, 40. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, what, did fail her. Yeah, we're absolutely. supposed to was have another moved on from era. That. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Welcome back to Talk Today. It is 8.29. Right, hold on a we'll second. No, no, let's just do, do this. Let's just do this. Yeah. I just said I've got to pick up a new car today, to which you said, how big is it? And I said, it's quite long. And you went, ooh, and then the thing came back on. Track. Oh, we'll have the weather in just a moment. <laughs> Here's what else is coming up in the programme. Uh, almost half of people in the UK would pay for better NHS services. Would you? We will discuss that in the papers next. Just before nine, it's feeding time. Uh, Nick Ellaby will be meeting the animal charity that are being hailed heroes they are. as they face their busiest year ever. And we're going to be naming that baby fox cub that I've got a earlier. great name for that fox. And has Prince Harry finally cut all ties with the UK at 9.20? Our royal editor Sarah Houston talks through the residency update that signals a clear break from Britain by Harry. But first, Naz is here with the weather. Morning. Morning. There's going to be some sunshine today. Hurrah! Not everywhere, but Ooh. it will be in the south, so you'll be happy, I guess. What are you trying to say? Huh? You I'm going there. up north later. <laughs> We're going to have then a bomb cake happy, and walk along the beach. Because there will be cloud <laughs> and rain spreading southwards. <laughs>
Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. Good morning. Some sunshine out there for today across southern areas of the UK, though everywhere else it's going to turn increasingly cloudy and wet as well as blustery as a front works its way southwards across the UK over the next 24 hours. But once that clears, high pressure starts to build in from the west and centre itself over the UK. So it will be a fine weekend for many. There will be cloudy skies still and a few showers around, but still some bright or sunny spells. And with lighter winds, it will feel milder. But it's back to business as we head into the new week with more wet and windy weather to come. So this morning, a sunny start for the vast majority of places, except across the northwest of Scotland and Northern Ireland. There's cloud and rain and brisk winds there already, and that will be spreading its way southwards. Most of it light and patchy in nature, but the winds are brisk. It's going to be cloudy. The lack of sunshine uh, will make it feel rather cool. So temperatures at best up to 10 degrees Celsius, but feeling like seven or eight with the brisk winds and the cloud and the rain. For Northern Ireland, I think it will become a bit dry later, but patchy rain will continue to work its way southwards across much of Northern England, the north of Wales, parts of the Midlands by the end of the day. And ahead of that, it will turn cloudier for the south of Wales and towards some central and eastern parts of England. But southern counties of England, I think, staying sunny for all of today. And with light winds there, it will feel pleasantly mild in the sunshine. And before the end of the day, I think Scotland will become drier and brighter, but there will be blustery showers spreading to the north there as that band of rain will continue its journey further southwards overnight across central and southern parts of England and Wales. So across these areas, not too cold tonight. In fact, everywhere not that cold because of the brisk winds. The temperatures will stay um, up into uh, single high single figures for many areas. And it should be mostly frost free because of the brisk winds, except for rural spots of Scotland. There will be a patchy frost there. Tomorrow, a much brighter day and slowly but surely becoming brighter and calmer from the west as that high pressure moves in. But eastern areas will still remain rather blustery and cool with some showers. Not too many showers, though, expected for Scotland and some good spells of sunshine at times in between patchy cloud. Northern Ireland, England and Wales also seeing sunny spells developing, especially from the west through the day. Further east, a bit cloudier with some showers. Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. Cheers, now it's time to go through the papers. A final look today with the Mail on Sunday's Anna Mihailova. Mm, perfect. My Kyle lover. Our broadcaster, Sean McDonald. Let's get straight to it. Shawnee, Telegraph, page 8. Four in ten of us will be willing to pay for better NHS treatment, including dental treatment, and are having surgeries quicker. Yeah. See, the people are wising up. Well, so a surgery, is, uh, a surgery sorry, a survey has been conducted on uh, whether people think that the NHS, social care, policing and education uh, are in need of reform. Overwhelmingly, people do think that the NHS is in need of reform and about 40% of people are saying they would be willing to pay or they'd cough up to pay for quicker dental appointments, sort of routine stuff, you know, GPs mm -hmm. uh, appointments and that type of thing. Um, if we can go straight to opinions, what I think of that, I think it actually could be a good thing to alleviate mm -hmm. pressure in the NHS. However, it cannot be at the expense of the, of the NHS. It cannot then be, a, I think, a reason to, to maybe think, well, we're not going to put any more money in, we're not going to try don't and reduce need any more money, we need to organise it better. I think, it, I mean, it has, it has to be better organised, but I just, what I mean is, it shouldn't be, OK, we're, we're just going to leave it as it is, no, obviously no. as in need of reform. You, you made a really good point earlier when you talked about free at the point of entry. Well, I, I, we, we talked about this last week. I yeah. still believe the NHS is revered and people hate to talk about it because, oh, it's amazing. It was and is amazing yeah. in part, but we have a much bigger population, a much older population, and I think people need to get their heads out of their back sides and go, we almost need NHS at 2.0. We need to modernise it. We need to change it. Don't you think, Anna? Well, I think you need to completely rethink it. However, I very much believe free at the point of use at the moment, at the point of entry, is, is, is fundamental because, mm -hmm. you know, this survey, I find this story infuriating, saying people are prepared to pay more. They do pay more. We all pay more mm -hmm. through our taxes. Taxes are the highest tax burden ever. So if anyone even tries to argue, as frankly Rishi Sunak did in his leadership contest, if you remember, any kind of a one pound charge, two pound charge, then lower people's taxes. You can't have mm -hmm. both. Yes, and what will yeah. actually happen if they try and introduce any kind of charge for this and that, as obviously dentistry already has, it'll just, you'll, you'll just get both and it'll be a money pit that yeah. soaks up more and more money, but doesn't actually deliver results. And it's incredible, isn't it? Mm. The same people who make that argument to say, oh, you know, the NHS doesn't need more money, it just needs better reform. And I respect that argument totally. The same people are saying, well, you know, people will pay more for it. You can't, you can't have both of those arguments mm. in the same breath. It's one or the other. Ultimately, reform is needed within the NHS, but we do have an aging population. Therefore, we will need to be investing yeah. more money into the service, regardless of how efficient it is. Um, let's go on, Anna. A Guardian, government official... D what? DWP is a cruelty. What's this? this? So, this story... OK, anyone who has cared for a relative, anyone who has, and that's a lot of people in this country at this point, um, who is a full-time carer, 
knows, first of all, how absolutely difficult that job is. And it is a full time. It's more than a full time job. Um, and carers, unpaid carers are allowed uh, an allowance every week, which is actually very modest by the general um, uh, compared to other allowances. However, they're only allowed to earn a certain amount a week uh, in, in actual income. It's £151 a week. And if someone earns even 1p more, they can get hit with a huge fine. And you've got people who are being sent enormous, you know, in one case, £4,000 fines and being told to pay them straight away. And also being told that if you try and appeal, the fine could go up. So this story is about that element of it, although, oh. frankly, the whole system is outrageous. And, and we, we go back to your earlier point about a previous guest who said, Angela Rayner, there's only a tiny amount of money, right? One P, one P over mm -hmm. a week, and you get hit with a massive fine. Yeah. I, mean, it's awful. I, 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 I think it's as scandalous as the post office scandal and arguably will end up affecting more people. It's horrendous. There's a case study here of a woman who has a, a her mother was not like 92 years old and they were handing over power of attorney because she, she was suffering from dementia and didn't notify DWP that there was a slight change in her circumstances that would mean a slight difference to her weekly allowance. And she's facing a seven thousand pound fine. It's outrageous, Sean. It's absolutely sadistic. And I think it's, it's representative of how this government has operated for so long, constantly going after the weakest members of society, going after people for, for pennies, when we're talking about obviously much, much bigger matters at hand. I, I, mate, I'm completely with you and how anybody isn't appalled by this, Joe, I know I tend to repeat myself. During the pandemic, my old man was in a care home before he died. These people, by the way, they get nothing and they are angels and they... Absolutely. We, of course we clap the NHS. I said it every day I've done this show. The, the care workers are angels who deserve far better treatment. That's and family disgusting. carers, which is, well, you know, what this story is about. Oh, this is on. going good. We're going from that to paedophiles. Sean Telegraph, page nine. I uh, don't... I'm going to... This is <laughs> good. Wow. Yeah, um, pedoph good! <laughs> paedophiles convicted of serious sexual offences are to potentially lose their parental rights yeah. under a proposed law potentially change. Potentially under a proposal that so should this, have been a goner I years think ago. It looks to me as if it's going to happen. This is an amendment to the Criminal Justice Bill. It's been tabled by Labour MP Harriet Harman. And it's got cross-party support because you've got Justice Secretary Alex Chalk, um, who, who's backing her on this. It's basically, this comes after, I have to have a wee look here, there was a case where there was a mother whose daughter was abused by the father. She then had to pay about £30,000 in legal costs because he was trying to be disruptive. You know, he had he still had these, these parental rights. So basically, it's challenging this outdated patriarchal notion that that a father should have like proprietorial rights over his children. Obviously, the safety of a child comes first. Yeah. Um, and you know the crazy thing is, if 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 a paedophile or a convicted paedophile loses, or, or is basically banned from being in contact with children, that doesn't include his own children. That's just that's absolutely bizarre. I mean, I, 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 honestly, mate, thank you for doing this story. Really, I, I have yeah. to stay calm. I, I, so, so it's taken what it's twenty twenty four, and a convicted paedophile can still see his and own it's, kids. It's that's an absolute joke. It's that taken is. for this poor mother to spend about thirty thousand pounds in legal fees, and there was a case I think where she was trying to take her child on holiday, and from prison. This father was able to sort of interfere with that, and it comes down to education, travel, housing, all these medical. You know, They're still you, allowed you, to make to, yeah. to contribute to these big life decisions that you, are being you, made. You, at the moment that you're convicted of that, you should be relinquishing all say in any matter to do with a child's life. I yeah. agree with you. I mean, completely agree. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it is an example of MPs doing the, their job properly. Yeah. I have to say Good. that they've spotted yep. this. Well, no, journalists first spotted it. I think it was mm. the BBC uh, did a report. Then MPs have acted, and cross party seem to be actually hopefully getting this over the line. Um, of course, the child's rights should be tantamount and not, you know, absolutely first and nothing to do with... You lose your liberty, you lose your rights. Yeah, that, you can be, that. I have to get this in very quickly. Uh, Anna, cowboy boot fan? Uh, well, I could be... I mean, Beyoncé has seen a surge in cowboy boot sales, um, reminding people it's not just Taylor Swift to move to markets. So, no, I mean, I won't be... If I do get pound cowboy boots, I'd go to Texas, where, you know, you get your foot measured Stop. and then they're... They're made exactly to the mould of your foot. So that's Amazing. where to get them. So she's that posh. She'd go to Texas. Do you wear... I imagine you wear cowboy boots. <laughs> I have a cousin people. who lives there, so to <laughs> be fair, there's you a link. kick people with your cowboy boots, I imagine, do you? <laughs> yeah, just the patriarchy. Um, <laughs> no, I don't own a pair of cowboy boots. I wish I did. Sean? Well, I'm, I mean, I don't own any. I'm seeing them everywhere. But if it's a trend, I might start investing in them, selling yeah. them. Yeah, they look great on men as well. They're kind of like a unisex... Yeah, with a little Although she, she was quite back. impressed the fact that I wear Ugg boots on the school run, leather ones. He does. He wears Ugg boots. Very comfy. I like the wee slipper ones. Yeah.
I don't have a pair. Actually, so can I you... ask you something which nobody can see on camera because I'm getting old? You're one of these young men whose trousers are three inches too short. You've got no <laughs> socks on. What's that all about? No, I Just I help me out. I, I don't get it. He is, I, I can confirm he is I wearing have got socks. socks on, but I will make a confession. Um, Travelling down from Glasgow, I forgot them, and I had to ask producer Lucy to bring me a pair of black socks. This morning. <laughs> I, I actually didn't mean it for that reason, but no, this obsession. Why. why did the younger generation listen, men's trousers so short? Listen, Grandpa, fashion changes. And you <laughs> just move it. I'll give you that, boy. <laughs> well done. Amazing. Thank you so much, both of you. Cheers, really good guys. to have you on this morning. This morning. Thank, Anna, you, Anna, thank you, and Thanks, sure. guys. Grandpa, um, he's right, though. <laughs> he is. Right, now, as you say, Animal Rescue Centre is an old people's home. Let's go to East Sussex. Uh, this, this animal centre has recorded its busiest ever year, seeing an 18% increase in the number of casualties it dealt with. Well, of course, we would send our Talk Today correspondent, Nick Ellaby, there. He's been spending time at the rescue centre this morning. Nick, you introduced us to the baby fox in the last hour. Is it feeding time now? Do you know what? We've been actually feeding a few of the hedgehogs here this morning. We've got ducklings here as well we can show you in a minute. So I'm here at the East Sussex Wildlife Rescue and Ambulance Service. They're doing incredible work here. Here with Trevor Weeks, the founder. He's got a very small team of, of staff and volunteers. They've also got an ambulance service. But we've been hearing that the costs are going up. Like for every business and charity, costs going up across the board. Last year, they rescued six thousand animals and in june alone one thousand just in that month and they're suffering at the moment from a bit of a shortfall in funding so they're looking ahead at the summer and into next year and worrying about how they can keep up this operation so first of all let's just have a look at the hedgehogs trevor if you just want to grab out uh, this little hedgehog so we, we've we've cleaned out the cage this morning we've had a look at so have a look at this little guy so how's this uh, hedgehog come to you and what do you treating him with? Well, this little chap's been found out during the daytime. As you can see, he's a little bit sort of grumpy. Um, and uh, I think he's got a little bit of a parasite problem internally that he's being treated for. So he's on medication. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully once he's completely healed, he'll go back to the wild. So before he gets too stressed, I better yeah. put him straight in his cage. OK, so this hedgehog's going back in the cage. We've been hearing about there's so many animals here. So there's a there's a smelly badger around the corner who was very grumpy this morning, didn't really want to who, uh, you know, play up for the cameras. They've got grebes, we've seen pigeons, doves, there's a tawny owl as well. Just the, the range of, of animals that are being rescued here, nursed back to health and put back into the wild is just incredible. We're also going to show you some ducklings as well. Just before we do that, Trevor, you're saying there's a problem with, with kids attacking wild animals. You're seeing a lot of that. Tell me about what kind of stuff you're yeah, seeing. Yeah, we get, we get all sorts of, of issues with sort of persecution and abuse of our wildlife. Um, you know, local to here, we've got the cuckoo trail, for example, and we get kids that go up and down the cuckoo trail with catapults, firing them at wildlife. And, you know, we've got, uh, we removed a couple of cat ball bearings from a couple of animals only last week. Um, we get people with air rifles you know in the countryside shooting we've even had people with crossbows you know persecuting our wildlife we had a um, a crossbow in a in a swan we've had air gun pellets in swans you know it's it just it's just never ending I mean, absolutely shocking if you hear about any of this behavior going on give those kids a clip around the head um we're going to show you these ducklings very very quickly i think uh, the, the camera can punch in so these gorgeous little ducklings here they're being nursed back to health as well just have a look at those this morning i don't know if you guys got a name for the fox that we met earlier as well i thought we could call it sam ellard what do you reckon guys no, no, they, you know I've been completely outvoted here. You'll learn this, young man, as your television career continues. The, the, the female element have bashed me down. Yeah, we've decided to go for Charlie Rowley. Because it's his birthday. Because it is his birthday. Charlie Rowley? Yes. Lovely name. Oh. Okay, well, and we've got Trevor, the, the silver fox here as well. <laughs> Listen, it's an Fabulous. amazing organisation, pal. Thank you. And I, and I hope the people watching this, because animals are so important to all of us, and I hope people understand places like this deserve and need a lot more money to survive. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much to Nick Ellaby in East Sussex with all of your furry friends. And Charlie Rowley, the little baby fox. He's going to murder you. What, Charlie? Yeah. So to come on the show, it's a topic which has angered many of you. This really has. £6.4 million of UK aid was given to an Indian fund. We want to say to you, do you think we should keep giving money to countries richer than us when we're all on our backsides and haven't got anything? Well, you have. Uh, this is Talk Today. It is 8.45. Good morning. I had to go on the tube the other day. 
A very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite Yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get. This. <laughs> but 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 I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight-pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I was just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <miss it. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know it's I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, <laughs> a trans. Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist we're, we're, we're did fail to, her. Yeah, we're supposed to it was another era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Welcome back to you Talk Today. It is 8.48. Now, a watchdog has found that £6.4 million in taxpayer-aided money went to an Indian fund that backed a social media site featuring offers of sexual services. But with India's GDP, that's basically how much money they have, being so much higher than our own. Is it time... And, I, God, I don't even... If anybody tries to disagree with this, I think I... Isn't it time for us to stop giving money to countries that are richer than us? Well, joining us to debate this is human rights lawyer David Haig, who believes that just because a country has a high GDP... David. ..does not mean there are no aid requirements there. Meanwhile, social commentator and columnist Ryan Mark Parsons says that there's greater domestic issues which you should be funding rather than giving our money to countries who don't necessarily need it. David, let's start with you. People will read this and be outraged, but you say that rich on paper isn't always rich in real life. Absolutely. I mean, good, good morning to you all. I mean, I think, you know, the GDP is never a good example of whether or not a country in reality is rich. Um, and, you know, I think what this is a bigger, bigger question that we need to look into in terms, and it's more of a political one, really. What, what do we want our role in the world to be? And do we want to be broadcasting global Britain out there and using investments and aid to, to bring us um, influence, et cetera. What this particular story is about, this particular story about is... David, I'm a fan of yours, right? And I absolutely, you know I am, I will forever believe that we should, as a nation, and I've said this until I'm blue in the face, take people from areas where there is destruction and war. And I know the differentiation. I also believe that we should do what we can to help countries who are really suffering. But, my friend, please let me repeat what Nicola said. UK aid money has been invested in an Indian fund that backed a social media site 
featuring offers of sexual services and the glorification of the Hamas attack on Israel on September the 7th. That watchdog, not us, found that out. That cannot in any way be justified. That is a complete waste of money. And there are people in this country who are struggling, David Hay. Come on. Absolutely. I, know, I agree with you, Jeremy. That is wrong. It's happening a lot more many times than we will see here. This is just the tip of the iceberg. You know, to, I worked in the Middle East and, and, and in, in, in areas in India for about 10 years, working and seeing in investment funds, particularly funds like, for, for instance, the World Bank, etc., how money from <laughs> governments around the world was, was essentially misused. This is wrong, it is the tip of the iceberg, but that doesn't mean that we should stop our global aid budget. No, I don't think it does. Uh, let's move to Ryan Mark Parsons. First time we've spoken, my friend. What does social mm. commentator mean? I know you work for the Daily Express. This means you've got opinions, my friend. I have opinions on a lot of things, including this. And I think it's absolutely absurd that we're sending money to India, especially when we're sending it to an Indian fund that is investing money in a social media app that is showing pro-Hamas material, and then also a cosmetics company and a debt recovery company. This money should be funneled, the £6.4 million that was sent to this Indian fund, into investing in our own services, like the NHS and also UNICEF reported last year that out of 39 of the world's richest countries, the UK is right at the bottom at number 37 of, uh, dealing, uh, of the rates of child poverty. That money would be better spent in our own country. Now, I'm not saying I'm against spending on UKA, but I think at the moment the government have these arbitrary targets where they just need to send millions overseas when actually it should be spent where it is needed. And clearly, India, which has a gross domestic product of £3.4 trillion against UK, which is nearly at £3.1 trillion, is richer than us. They don't need the money when they're funding their own space programme. I think it's absolutely ridiculous when we have sent last year £91 million to India, when actually in 2012, their finance minister said that the money they're receiving from the UK is peanuts. That's what he said. So why are we still sending money to India when they're categorically richer than us? It doesn't make sense to me. Completely agree. Can I just, can I throw both of you this? Because we've asked loads of people. Jacqueline. I worry about spending so much money on foreign aid when we have so many people living on the streets and struggling to heat their homes. David Haig, that's my point, right? That is my point. Absolutely. And I think that's a wider, wider discussion the country needs to have. Do we want to re retract from our, our, our spending on global aid and, and, and look towards putting that more into the country? Or do we want to carry on on a, on a global stage? And I think that's, that's one of the issues here. I mean, to differentiate, though, between the two instances here, the company, the, the entity that's effectively invested this money in this, in this Indian tech fund is effectively almost the commercial arm of the foreign office in terms of investments. It, it's what used to be, the I think, the Commonwealth Development Corporation it was set up in about, I think, 1940s or 1950s. That's, that role is a little bit different to traditional aid going into, for instance, refugee camps and charities. Their role is, in a way, to use and commercial that's, investment. That's the and you think that the fact that the money has been invested in this kind of company, also to say that similar material is obviously shared on Twitter, which is a platform, or X, that lots of people use, so that there should be a... Dis uh, anyway, we should d distinguish between those two things. Um, but, Ryan Mark... <sighs> Are you completely against giving any aid to a country that is wealthier than us? Or is it specifically the particular endeavours that our government are investing in that you have a problem with? Why should we give money to countries? Well, I think global aid, any kind of overseas aid, should go to countries that actually need it. And I think if a country such as India is spending money on their own space development programme, I don't think it really necessitates giving any foreign aid to a country that has... A GDP stop, right, that's right, just stop there ours. one minute, because I'm completely with you. It's a really basic question. Should we give... It's an amazing text from, from Patrick. Let me read this out. The question Nick just put was, should we be giving money to a country of rich No, we shouldn't. We, should, we can help people who are... Uh, uh, Patrick says, I want to know, here's a good one for both of you, if this was reversed, would these countries donate to the United Kingdom and help us with our country that's on its knees? Answer me that. Well, that's it. And just to add as well, the British International Investment, right, it's a finance, it's an institution, uh, it's a government institution. They received £4 billion pounds over the last four years. Uh, sorry, after, uh, over the last few years. And that money clearly isn't being spent. It's designed to invest in programmes internationally to alleviate poverty, to 
help female uh, f female workers in uh, less developed countries. But clearly, if they're investing their money, the money the taxpayer is sending them in pro in businesses that's investing money into social media apps and cosmetic companies, it clearly needs to have a refocus Absolutely. on where this money is going. All right, listen, final word, David. transparency is required. David, final word. Um, listen, we should all help people who can't help themselves, but this does nobody any favours. This is a... The optics of this are awful, pal, aren't they? I, I agree. I think if the, 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 the simple way to sum this up, if it benefits us in, in England, in, in the UK, and on a global stage, then yes, we should carry on with that. If it doesn't, then perhaps we need to reevaluate re that. Good. Thank you, guys. Thank both you, of you both. Thank David you. David Haig and Ryan Mark Parsons there. We'll still to come. We'll be returning to our top story. As a Tory MP is accused of misusing £14,000 of campaign funds, including to pay bad people. Do keep getting in touch with your views and your opinions. Grant Shapps has spoken out about Mark Menzies. We'll do that after this break. So it's nine. And we're coming back in three to rock. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And you're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't Talk. gonna happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat girl. When JK Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Hey, Quite hey. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <miss him. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> that, that oh, a, a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> <even> <laughs> Yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, what did fail her. Yeah, we're absolutely. supposed to have was moved on from that. Era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. On TV, on radio, and on your smartphone, this is Talk TV. This is Talk Today with Jeremy Kyle and Nicola Thorpe. Hey, very good morning to you. It's nine o'clock on Thursday, the 18th of April. It is, and you're with Talk Today on TV, radio, online, and your smart speaker. These are Thursday morning's top stories, my friends. Kidnap threats and misuse of thousands of pounds of campaign funds. 
The extraordinary allegations against Tory MP Mark Menzies now under investigation. We'll speak to a former head of comms for number 10 this hour. And Rwanda rumbles on. Lovely political ping-pong in Westminster continues as the bill is rejected by the House of Lords for the, yeah, fourth time. And bye-bye Britain. Prince Harry's final farewell to the UK as he registers as an official American resident. Our royal editor has her say this hour. And for many areas of the UK, it's looking cloudy and wet for today, but there will be sunshine for some. I'll have the details in the forecast at the end of the programme. Thank you, Naz. Well, now it's time for your headlines with Emily. Thank you, Nicola. Good morning. A Conservative MP has been suspended after allegations in The Times that he misused campaign funds. £14,000 from donors is said to have been transferred to Mark Menzies' bank accounts. The MP for Farland in Lancashire strongly denied the claims which are being investigated by his party. Travel chaos is continuing at the world's second busiest airport in Dubai as the city is hit by the worst rainfall in 75 years. More than a year and a half's rainfall fell in just a few hours and forecasters say that more bad weather's on the way. Well, travel expert Simon Calder has told Talk Today that it's had huge knock-on effects for travellers. It's about 48 hours since these, these apocalyptic uh, rains started pouring in. You can see the scenes there, absolutely terrible. And we saw yesterday effectively gridlock in Dubai. Bear in mind that this is probably the biggest global aviation hub in the world. A UK-founded website used to scam people on an industrial scale has been taken down after a global police operation. Lab host let criminals steal people's information, including almost half a million card numbers. Officers say younger people who grew up with the internet were the most likely to fall for the phishing scam. The Scottish government's expected to ditch its flagship climate change policy. Ministers have been told the target of cutting greenhouse gas emissions by 75% by the end of this decade is unachievable after missing eight of the last 12 annual targets. A statement from Holyrood is expected this afternoon. And many of this summer's cheapest European holidays are in surprising destinations. Consumer group Witch has worked out that the least expensive are places generally considered pricey, like the Greek islands or Italy's Amalfi Coast. The cheapest average price was for breaks on the tiny Greek island of Kalimnos at £847. You're up to date with the headlines. I'll have another update at 10 o'clock. Thank you, Emily. Uh, now, just uh, this whole Conservative MP uh, conversation is, it, to me, it's Scandals absolutely... Scandals keep on coming, and, don't and, they? So, so just, just to sort of put it in layperson's terms, Mark Mendes, who in 2014, uh, as an MP, um, was suspended... Uh, because there was some sort of drug and a rent boy scandal. Mm. Uh, we'll put that to one side because he was then re-elected by the good people of Fylde in, uh, in Lancashire. Uh, yesterday it came out, this is extraordinary, that at about three o'clock in the morning one morning, um, Mark Menzies phoned up a 78-year-old constituency worker aide and said, I find myself in a, quite a difficult position. All of this is alleged, of course. I find myself unable to be escaping from some bad people that I met on the internet. I need six and a half thousand pounds. Now, obviously, he's had the whip withdrawn. Hmm, I bet he doesn't like that. Um, but the, the story that's, that's sort of coming out now, and this is, this is really interesting, because reaction in the last couple of hours, Grant Shapps on Menzies, this is the, uh, the Defence Secretary, he suggested Mr Menzies is potentially somebody who is quite troubled. Mm -hmm. Mr Shapp said new information to come to light on Wednesday, prompting a conversation between the Chief Whip and Mr Menzies, which resulted in the MP giving up the Tory whip. So was the new information an investigation by the Times? Because well, apparently they knew about this for several months. Well, that's right. So Liberal Democrat Deputy Daisy Cooper said it was frankly appalling that the Tory party had been aware of the allegations for more than three months, oh, yeah. when our national security faces threats on many fronts. It's slightly concerning that some MPs are so open to traps, threats and manipulations. There's only one person who can basically give us the lowdown on the fact that whether it's honey trapping, rent boys, drugs or whatever, it's right. Life. Jonathan Haslam, good morning. Former good morning. head of comms. So, I've got to do this. You're there now, last night. This happens. What the hell do you do, man? Fire him instantly. And uh, why the Conservative Party is recruiting these people, and they've had prior, prior warning, heaven knows. Uh, I mean, where do you find these guys? Uh, and what is it about Northwest politicians, and, and particularly well, no, so I said Scott, Scott, Scott Benson, Benson in Blackpool South, and Indeed. then Menzies in in Fylde. It's all um, within the same area. It, 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 there's, there's a geographical thing. Hold there. on a like, second. Taking what you just said, though, is is very interesting. I know you, we're flippant about sacking him, but, but we've been talking about. I believe that we have a right as a democratic electorate 
to expect high standards, whether that's him, Scott Benton, Angela Rayner, tell the truth. It's about money. It's about we want to trust these people. Their reputation as an entity is in the toilet, Jonathan. You wouldn't disagree with that. You said, where do they come from? Are we putting too much pressure on people who've been on here this morning going, well, they work long days and there's bars and stuff. There are people in the United Kingdom who work long days and go to the pub that don't end up with cocaine and a rent boy at three o'clock in the morning. Allegedly. Uh, but, you know, you and I are both reasonable people. Or so boring, let, maybe. Let us just say, this guy's obviously got some mental health problems, he's got sexuality problems, but you have to ask questions of the Conservative Party about how they are recruiting the people who are holding our futures in their Completely hands through agree. legislation that's going forward. And there are too many examples that we've seen on both sides of the political divide of people who just simply cannot hack it and shouldn't be in that position. Um, and it is bizarre that the poor people have filed have had this person foisted on them for another election in the face of information they already had. But my point is, and, I, and I'm going to tread really carefully because I don't want you to shout at me, um, we've had people on this morning, not you, Jonathan, um, We've had people on here this morning who say we expect too much from our MPs. And, you know, if you go online and you... I mean, your boss had an affair, right? Let's be perfectly frank. That's a well-known fact with Edwina Curry. What I'm trying to say is do we expect too much? Do we expect them to be all be squeaky clean people? What about politicians being more honest with the public? And say, I'm divorced twice, I'm living with a... Would we, that work? Jeremy, we expect our politicians to be like us. Sensible, reasonable people yeah. trying to do a good job and it's a very difficult job. Yep. And 99.9% .9 of the people in the Houses of Parliament actually do a really good job for their constituents. OK. You get some rotten apples, you do but, throughout society. But you society. would understand, but, Jonathan, you know, there are many expected. rotten apples. It seems to be every single day there's a new, there's <sighs> a new sleaze thing, doesn't it? It does indeed. The numbers are small, relatively speaking. But we do ask questions about the strength of character of people who mm. are putting themselves up for election. And we have to recognise as well, because, as I said, we're reasonable people. Social media has changed the dynamic for people in public life. It means call Not just out. politicians, yeah, just but for caught. Nicola, but for you, Listen, Jeremy. You are in the public eye. Yeah. Yeah. And it changes the dynamic in a dramatic way. But then, and we but then my point is that Nicola Thorpe and Jeremy Carl are mature enough to not go and do... That's ridiculous. And there is a difference. I take your point about, you know, people get involved in affairs, etc. But that, to me, is a personal matter mm -hmm. for, you know, to a certain extent. However, with this case, what is being alleged Campaign is not course. just misdemeanours in terms of lifestyle choice, but campaign money being campaign used. And criminality as well. Yeah. Because yeah. associations alleged about drug misuse uh, and, uh, you know, perhaps importuning young people who are not of the legal age to be able to uh, engage in any activities Lots of, of that sort. Lots of response, Jonathan. Is that Maeve? How would you say that name? Maeve. Or Maeve, Maeve, yeah. The saddest part of, the, of this, actually, she says, this, this isn't the first and he won't be the last MP to abuse his power and his position. That's what's causing people to be so fed up. I think it's a very relevant point. It is indeed. And that's why you would expect the party to act more determinedly and more quickly to, uh, to make sure that they've actually got the the right people in the right jobs. And if people have fallen short, you need to find ways of helping them, if that's appropriate, or cutting the cord. And that's not what the Conservative Party appears to be doing. Why then wouldn't they have dropped him from the party when 10 years ago there was that scandal involving, Absolutely. allegedly, rent boys and, and drug use? I just, I find it, it incredible that they wouldn't have a, a talent pool big enough to, to get somebody else I in. I agree with that entirely. There are talented people out there. One of the problems that we've also got here is that uh, disconnect between us as people who think, you know, Actually, are we paying MPs enough for the job they're doing? I know, if, you know, some people will say no, well, they get a lot of money. This morning. But you, you, you do have people. But more got, money doesn't they mean are, morality, does they it? Are, they are legislating for us, and yeah. you want people who are of a right calibre to do it, who are prepared to take the slings and the brickbats of being in public life, of being in that goldfish bowl, mm. to do an effective job. I, th I don't I, think we're there. I, yeah. I see it a bit like a football manager. You think of the iconic football managers who had complete control of the team. Think of Sir Alex Ferguson, and then you see players on high wages nowadays with, with managers they openly, openly are, are against. Listen to what Rosie says. The reason the Tories are being in this mess is because they don't have a leader to look, look up to who is strong. Sunak's sinking popularity explains the party's dying enthusiasm to serve, and their audacity is openly abusing their position as MPs. Only a general election can save this country. I not, honestly believe... Not, not quite correct. He's not very strong, though, no, is he, Sunak? No, Sunak's been around for, you know, what, 18 months? Yeah. This predates that. 
This guy was elected in an election before Sunak became Why, prime minister. Ago, you, can, Sunak you, can, out? you cannot, you know, lay all of this at Sunak's door. Let's admit it. Sunak has inherited the most awful mess within mm. the Conservative Party. Wanted the job, though, Joe. He, yes, of course, they always want the job. Mm. And actually, in the first instances, he gave us a degree of stability. So let's give him a bit of credit for doing that. It feels like there have to be so many more checks and balances. Mm. I mean, it's not just it's not just the Tory party or the Labour party. Look at Reform as well, who are trying to, um, you know, push their new candidates across the country. And then one was found to have already died. Dying. And then another... Sorry? Yeah, one of oh, the Reform yes. candidates had actually already passed away. They weren't aware of it. Um, and somebody else had been Probably involved... Probably get elected. In, well, yeah. Had uh, been involved in other horrendous crimes and should never have been on the ballot. But... And it is across all parties. We make, Nick makes yeah. that point. Re reform Structure. is, you know, it's just a new party of a few people. They have no infrastructure whatsoever to be able to weed out the loonies until a free press does it for them. And this is a, actually a big advert for a free press. Again, could you not argue that that's exactly what's happened to the Tory party as well, that thanks to this investigation from The Times, this mm. is what's brought this story to light? Indeed, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's but, I mean, well, I would take issue with you, because the first thing out of your mouth was saying, yeah. sack him. I, I'm, I don't oh, rate that's Sunak. That's I don't pragmatic. Think it, you, you, you can talk about the past. Why three months ago didn't Rishi Sunak go, get him out of my party right now and let's, show a let's pair Let's find of... out what he was told in the first instance, or did the apparatchiks in central office just say, we'll just try and hide this away? Poor Rishi's got an awful lot of other problems there. We don't know How at this do you, point. Right, that's a really interesting thing for me. So... We can sit here and think the PM would be the be-all and the end-all and would know all, but stuff's kept from him, right? Well, you can't deal with everything. You know, Processes. he's got so many things. He's got people he needs to rely on. I'd want on. to know but if one of my MPs had been caught in allegedly wherever. Chief Whip's job. I'm trying to run a country. I'm trying to get a Rwanda bill through. I'm trying to get the economy in a state where actually we can go to the electorate and say, you know, don't trust the other lot. See what they will do with your finances. At mm. least we've turned it round. You know, he cannot do everything. And part of a problem with a prime minister who tries to do everything, it's the Gordon Brown syndrome. And actually, you don't do the right things. You don't prioritise. You need good people in the right place covering your back. And that's not what Sunak's got. Do you that's think really Sunak's got the respect of his party? The respect He's of got MPs. the respect of some of it. Mm. But clearly, there is a right wing. There is a, you know, there is an existential debate going on within the Conservative Party about whether they're going down loony trusts and, you know, the ultra right wing of it, or are they sticking with your Damien Greens and your justice ministers and other people in the centre of the party where most of the country is? And then you've got that fascinating divide of where do you put Kemi Badenoch? Right. Because a very smart lady inclined towards the right but very pragmatic on other issues, just not doing a terribly good job with trade deals. It's very interesting, um, isn't it? You, you talk there like, the, you know, the country is a business. And you, 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 I was sitting here thinking, God, you'd have to be so careful who you pick to be your chief of staff or your director of communications. Or to chairman of the post office. Yes. But, wow, Haslam's on form this morning. <laughs> we'll have a knighthood for you yet, Jonathan. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you so very much. much indeed. Jonathan Haslam there, former head of comms for number 10. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Well, still to come, Prince William will return to work later today in what will be his first public engagement since Kate revealed her cancer diagnosis. Well, Sarah Hewson has the details next. This is Talk Today, approaching quarter past nine. Uh, we're coming back in three. Do please join us. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. 
they might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I was just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, miss him. There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know it's I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. So he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans. Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist did to, fail her. Yeah, we're we're supposed to it was another era. That. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Uh, welcome back to Talk Today. 17 minutes past nine. Kevin Alex from 9.30. Julia from Nerva 10. Uh, the Prince of Wales later today will participate in his first public engagement since news of his wife's cancer diagnosis, which unbelievably was four weeks ago now. Well, the news comes as Prince Harry has officially cut ties with Britain after listing his California mansion as his primary residence. Well, where else would he put it? Uh, Jude, uh, joining us now, sorry, mm -hmm. is... <laughs> I don't what know did what you I was, say? I just went off on one. Okay. Uh, joining us now is Talk TV's where Royal... Where else would he put what? Uh, well, where else would he say his primary residence? He's, he's lived there for several years. It's like this Angela Rayner brow we've been having all morning where someone's primary residence is. Doesn't mean he's cutting ties with the UK, does it or does it? Sarah Hewson. Hello. The most bizarre <laughs> introduction you've had, uh, I'm sure, whilst you've been on this show. Uh, which one do you want to talk about Should first? Should we talk about Harry first, then? Yes, why uh, don't So we? this is uh, a document he filed with Companies House for Travelist, his ecotourism organisation. And it was a change of address document, so changing from the UK to the United States. It was filed on Wednesday, but it was backdated to June the 29th last year. That coincides with what we believe to be the date that he and Meghan had to hand back the keys to Frogmore Cottage God on the instructions is. of his father. Now, it's being taken by some as a sign of how wounded he is, that he's saying that I have no ties anymore with the United Kingdom. I think there are practical matters here. If you don't have an address to put on a document for Companies House, you have to say where you do live, and he clearly lives in I, the United States. I think this is... You've perfectly articulated my it's confusion got a home, about this story. So have you. Um, and the fact that wow. he has to have registered his address. He's got a boat. He has to, exactly. He has to have registered his address somewhere. Does and it he really doesn't mean have that... one here. No. He really doesn't. And we've come across this multiple times when he's come back to visit. Where does he go? Where does he stay? He doesn't have an address. Um, it also raises questions, again, about whether he should still be a councillor of state, because a no. councillor of state has to be domiciled no, in the United be. Kingdom. Right. There's been a fudge around that, effectively, because the King's added uh, Princess Anne and Prince Edward onto the list of those and said that only working royals can represent him as a councillor of state. So but isn't brave enough to take his son completely off, but then doesn't allow Nor him his to brother, have a, yeah. Andrew. Yeah, which yeah. is ridiculous to me. There's yeah. also a bit of confusion because we've had fairly mixed messages from Harry, uh, depending on who he's talking to, about where he sees home. Because during his court case against the Home Office, he very much said, the UK is my home, I want to be able to return here, and I want to be able to bring my children back here because this is their heritage and is very important but I don't feel safe to do so. While he was talking to uh, American broadcasters uh, during Invictus Games event earlier this year, he said that he was considering applying for citizenship. 
in the United States. He's talked about California very much feeling like his home uh, right now. Mm -hmm. So uh, two different uh, things, but I think we've basically got a, a, a legal document here which says, where do you live? Well, he lives in California. Yeah, just stating the facts. I would have thought. Uh, Jeremy Kyle's got a wry smile. He has. He's, he's, What's your wry smile He's pondering about, whether he can come out. I always think, you know, we had a conversation privately this morning about authenticity, right? Yeah. I just, I, I, I mean this, I don't have an argument. I just always believe those two do something with timing for a reason. I don't care whether he's domiciled in America or here. He's made his bed lie in it. I just, it's not that important to me. But you can't say it's to... timing. It's the end of the tax year. That's what it was. Was it to save tax then? Well, no, it's... Paying it, UK it, tax? It, Start it's, that rumour. It's the company's house. Anyway, enough of Harry. Let's talk about his brother, Prince William, who yes. has prepared for his first public engagement. I can't believe, it, as you said earlier, it's mm. been four weeks yeah. since Kate's... Who will forget notice. that amazing, honest interview? Yes, exactly. Sitting on that bench uh, in Windsor and revealing her cancer diagnosis. Uh, since Do we know then, anything about her health? We don't know anymore. We haven't uh, seen anything of her uh, since then, as we were told to expect. Uh, we have seen William since then. He took George to Aston Villa yes. uh, to watch their team uh, play last Thursday. He's also spotted out at the pub with his mother-in-law, Carol Middleton, in Norfolk. That's where the family have been based for the school Easter holidays. Imagine just going out to the pub and, come on, let's go for a little drink. With a feature cake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, George, Charlotte and Louis went back to school yesterday. I and so that. today is William's first day back at work. And he's got two engagements today uh, in Surrey and West London. They're around community uh, support organisations, environmental organisations. He's visiting a, a surplus food organisation uh, today, uh, which tries to match up those in food poverty with uh, food waste. It's very much in keeping with the Coronation yep. Food Project that was announced by his father. Uh, and so we're going to see him back to work, and this is the start of it. Be good to see that. Um, I don't really want to, but I will anyway. What do you make of Meghan Markle's jam? God. <laughs> well... Uh, Megan so has far has she fallen from being a TV star? 50 jars of limited edition strawberry jam. Why? Beautifully packaged with lemons and flowers yeah, of course. to her friends and influencers. Has she got Each that with many a number friends? on them, and they've been posting about them on Instagram. If I receive one of those, I'd be taking a look at what number I got. See, see? <laughs> what number? 49, you, you can me? do one, Markle. <laughs> Who was number one? Well, I'm guessing, would it have to be Doria, her mother, would it? Can I, oh, can yeah, I just say, you hope so. Can I please, because Nick thought, do you not think it's a bit of a come down? Well, actually... Making it, jam? She's actually going back yes. to where she was before with her I blog, The yesterday. Tig. She was very much into food, into cooking, into Well, can I ask wine, the obvious one? It's, I can't use that word now for the candle. What do I use? What do I say? You do it, because I, I, I want to know if she's going to do a... A candle, yes, that, well, similar to what Gwyneth Paltrow did. I don't think she'll go quite so far in her lifestyle brand. But as Sarah said, this is very much what Meghan used to do before she met Harry, before she was a member of the royal family. And she, of course, had to give that up. She had to give up her Instagram page, her brand and everything. So this is just a new one. However, I do think American Riviera Orchard is quite the mouthful, Sarah. It is. And the branding of it, it's very nostalgic, isn't it? It's quite old-fashioned uh, looking. Someone pointed out that one of the jars had already got the label peeling off so um, but this is Honestly, very much why did it? i love that headline they got sickly sweet that sums it all up yeah i mean it's it's her soft launch to her friends who are publicizing it on sure. social media and, and then we'll have the bigger launch she's I'm got desperately the searching for a comment up. um no, I'm not reading that. No, OK. <laughs> uh, OK, fair enough. Uh, uh, so we can't Three buy her stupid jam that she's not only yet. made 50. We can't. No. Uh, only her friends can taste it. We will be able to eventually. There's about And if you want a oak. copper pan, what? or if you want copper pans, and or... And kitchen linens. Kitchen linens. Yeah. Yeah. No, I wanted we'll... to just go I, I away and have... shut up. I don't I think... want a jam or anything. I, I, I thought you wanted candles. them to leave the royal family and make a living on their own, and she's doing it. Yeah. Anyway, that's almost the end of today. <laughs> um, do you know what? After three and a half hours of being slightly hangover, I've got no response to that. Well done, Thorpe. <laughs> yes, Sarah's here tomorrow for Talk Today with the excellent David Bull. We'll see you Monday morning, six o'clock. And Kevin and Alex are up next. But first, here's the weather with Naz. See ya. Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather.
Hello, it's turning increasingly cloudy, wet and windy from the north for this afternoon after a sunny start virtually everywhere. So we see that cloud and rain and the brisk wind spreading across much of Scotland, Northern Ireland, Northern England and the north of Wales and parts of the Midlands through this afternoon. The far north of Scotland becoming drier and brighter before the day is out. But the best of the sunshine and the dry weather along southern counties of England where with light winds it will be feeling mild in the sunshine but feeling cool under the cloud, rain and brisk winds elsewhere. Overnight that front continues its journey further southwards across remaining parts of England and Wales so for central and southern parts of the UK it will be a cloudy and damp night further north it will be clear now with the brisk winds overnight it shouldn't be too cold and it should be mostly frost free although a patchy frost is likely in some rural spots of Scotland where showers will continue there then for tomorrow we'll see that cloud and rain clear from central and southern areas early in the morning then lots of sunshine will be developing it still remains windy though across eastern parts of the UK but further west I think we will see the winds eventually ease and we'll see dry conditions showers are likely though for many central and eastern parts of the UK still some of them rather heavy and still quite cool along the east coast. Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. Very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't Talk. gonna have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. Having a conversation with a professional journalist, he chose to belittle her, diminish her, um, and use sexist language. I can't stand the word casual sexism. There's nothing casual about igniting and using kind of diminishing and belittling language about anyone, especially someone who's trying to do her job. When JK Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. And when the media constantly refer to trans criminals, when they are biological men as women, we will no longer put up with these lies about our gender anymore and about our sex. Trans woman is not a woman, trans woman. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. I, that's robust. It's going to cause a, an argument. It's going to cause tension. But we've got to do it, because otherwise this country is going down the path. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying, um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yeah. Quite yeah. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. Mate, might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight-pound Nokia, reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. One parent commented on a review of Peppa Pig that their daughter had begun to lash out since watching the show and added that Peppa is rude, bossy, a liar, tattletale and even more. Say it's not so. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh. It's carry on what just <laughs> happened. <laughs> Whoa, listen. There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know it's I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. That's quite a small statue then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> ah, a trans. Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, you put him in an ice cream store. And once you get defeated by a guy named Begley, that's <laughs> it. You retire from politics, and you speak to Rosanna on primetime and have a lot more fun. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. They're now trying to 